I've spent over a hundred hours playing on this great world. 300 or so Minecraft in game days, learning how to use the mod, building my own beautiful city, and of course developing farms to make whatever I want. While never really leaving this one island, I saw it transformed from the lush wilderness to a barren wasteland and into a full beautiful skyline. And yes, there was the steampunk aesthetic the entire whole time. I'm glad you asked. So this video will recount my first 100 hours of gameplay. I hope you enjoy and new episodes are coming every Friday. I, I, I don't know how to do anything in Create. I only do from having watched others, so this is going to be a learning experience for me too. Yes, we're here primarily for the cogs and for the pretty biomes. We've got biomes aplenty in this pack, hence the lovely little autumn forest that we have found behind us that I am just in love with these tree colors. Ah! Yeah, and uh, so we commandeered this little autumn island to build our mechanized empire out of. So, uh, that being said, what can we make, though, is my question, because uh, as of this moment, we'd only really have materials that were absolutely necessary to get on this island, well, and that's not a lot. That's not 100% true, because I did kind of spend an entire two-hour stream just looking for iron. Oh. And well, uh, and so I have most of a stack over here, in addition to what I've put into mm -hmm. tools. So we get a kickstart. And, that's, and that should mean that we can make some tools quick and easy, so... I think first thing is that we should either uh, get a tool for chopping or a tool for digging. What do you want to do first? Well, I mean, I was about to ask, does your create mod have some sort of a some sort of a tool in it that sets trees on fire? Because I want to build stuff and so far this is uh, very not buildable. We need to get rid of the forest uh -oh. somehow and if... Uh... Yeah, if perhaps there's a flamethrower sort. Well, not on fire, but I mean, we can build a saw and uh, lumberjack him down. Well, actually, I guess we don't even need a crafting table. We got JEI in here. Look up the mechanical saw. Probably okay. just type in saw and it'll pop up. Well, yeah, I did see the saw. I can press yeah. W to ponder. Oh. Okay, I'm pondering, I'm pondering. But how does that apply to, to the trees? So what we can do is we can plop one of those down in front of one of the trees, crank it, and chop the whole tree down in one go, instead of having to chop it down oh. log by log. Yeah, tree capitation, there we go. Alright! Right, we gotta make the iron sheets first, which means that the saw is not the first thing that we're gonna be making. The first thing we're gonna be making is mechanical press. How do we need mechan how do we make mechanical press? Um good question. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, a block of iron, an andesite casing, and a shaft, and the andesite casings are lots of fun to make. Uh you're you're going to be very very amused by these. Oh. Hey, do you happen to have any andesite? I've got a bit, but I am a scrap surviving on cobble, but I do have diorite and cobble, so I know you. You're gonna make that. I am trying. I am. I'm. I'm trying pretty desperately. It's not not doing it. Oh, that's because you, that's not how you do it. How did I forget the recipe? I always am the one to remember that the recipe exists, but the recipe itself eludes me. We do got iron nuggets, so it's just yep. a this and a this, and a this and a this, and we got a casing, uh, an andesite alloy. Do we yep, just... Andesite alloy. Do we just and poke a tree with it? Kind of. Um, there are ways to automate it eventually, but yeah, go ahead and slap those on those. Oh my god. And this is... Uh, what is that? It Automatable, but for right now, yep, this is this is how we make them and these right. are key components to practically anything in create is either these or Fancier brass versions we get later a brand new Incredibly exciting way of getting spruce planks or at least spruce plank colored things <gasps> and they connect Yeah, they connected shapes. They are connected texture No uh, I will convert every every tree I own. Every tree on this island <laughs> will become an underside casing. We got the underside casing. Now we need the iron sheet, which is made with a mechanical press, which requires yes. an entire block of iron, a shaft, and a single underside casing. Yes, you get I swear, stick. this mod does not need to actually be mechanized. <laughs> Just the building possibilities here alone are kind of very impressive to me. That's what I figured you'd be most excited about, is because this whole mod's just a steampunk mod. Like, 
You're the only one that didn't have to bring a new skin to this equation. <laughs> <laughs> the block of iron, the shaft, and the underside getting. Do the mechanical press. So we're going to make the depot. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the press on top of it like that. And there's just one last thing missing, which is a way to spin it. Uh... So let's get ourselves a crank to go ahead and spin it up. Or do you... Are... That uh, made it sound like you had one already. Oh, it requires power. We gotta power it somehow, which like I said, early game. <laughs> we'll have to manually spin this silly thing. Well, only uh, at first. We can get ways to actually power <laughs> it. See? Oh, did it do it? How is that not fun? So, welcome to Mechanical Press Channel. Is it gonna do anything? Okay. Come on, science needs to be done. Nope, it didn't do anything to you. I'm kind of sad. Do we have enough uh -huh. now to make the sauce? Do we, do we, do we? Um, yes, we do. There we go. So one mechanical saw for you. Mm -hmm. And yep, you can take that crank. That's fine. And, <laughs> I was uh, just about to make another one. Yeah, yeah let's go, go see it in action. Now, if you shift and place, instead of just placing, it will place the saw facing it. Oh. For you, as opposed to away from it. So it's like it's a piston versus uh, observer kind of situation. All right. Yes. There's a tall yeah. tree ahead. Let's go, let's go check it out. Cranky, 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 cranky. And boom. All right. This was pretty satisfying. Right, right. Oh. Here, I'll spin the next one so you can see. You can see the. Oh my god! Action. Yes. <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was cathartic, honestly. Like, if you ever try to chop down one of those big biggins, you know that right. how good this feels. Uh, well, so nice. Let's get another crank, another mechanical saw made for you, and I guess tree capitation commences. Yeah. Uh, do we just want to bald the entire island? There is what you're after, then, or no? No, that's fair. It's either us or them, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Zoy, what are you doing? You're supposed huh? to be taking the trees down, not back up. No, listen. What are you... How do you think the mod knows where one tree ends and then another one begins? I don't know. All right, you ready? All right. Timber! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the forest is gone. That was <laughs> weirdly anticlimactic. Boo, you do it then. So, uh, if my calculations are correct, this is every single tree on this island. Or rather, every single tree that I... used to be on this island. Yep, and uh, the saplings to, to, to go with it. And uh, these are all the apples we have. We harvested. Oh. Uh, so, also, yeah. also, this is actually quite a lucky selection of uh, vegetation because we got, we got yellow mm -hmm. autumn saplings, maple saplings, and orange autumn saplings which is very important oh. because orange ones give you regular oak or maybe the other way no wait orange ones give you dark oak maple mm. gives you regular oak and autumn gives you uh what they're called birch, birch yeah now we do have an entire nice. forest of like another assortment across the pond here but really right now this is actually a really good selection of foods Double, uh, doubled yeah. up by I can also strip that and we can also case that. So we actually yes. have quite a few textures available to us right now. So much so that I'm just, I, I don't know, I was gonna wait for us to discover like uh, cobblestone generators or something like that to actually build something. But I say no, let's just, let's just put something together. Like we do need a place to, to live now that we completely okay. deforestated this stupid island. Oh my god. God, look at it on the minimap. Lovely little autumn forest that we found behind us that I am just in love with these tree colors. Ah! Just treant. <laughs> this, this is a desert now. 
<laughs> we should plant something back. Oh my god. I mean, obviously this this needs a lighthouse down off that that front pointy bit at the south side. Okay. But other than that, I don't know what to put on this place. Maybe, maybe like a little market on the beachy area that we've got, because it's like closest to where everybody else will be coming from. Well, it would make sense to have like a lighthouse. It would make sense to have some sort of a market or like port area. I'm just thinking that, like, this area here, like, it's technically a river, right? If we could totally build, like, a, one of those water mill, you know, power station -y things. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe even double, down, double it d down and use it as a bridge of sorts, like a, like a dam. Oh, you're saying a big one, not a... Oh, you're, you're talking like a whole hydroelectric dam, but like industrial era. <laughs> well, not immediately. Right? We'll start with something smaller, all right? Okay. We can maybe even put some of those like really cool flywheels to make make it look like uh, the water's actually pushing some water um, water mills around. Like there's actual energy being generated. Well, that's the thing too, is that we can carefully hide the actual water that's pushing it and get the water wheels spinning from like the whole set of them still. What what do you mean actual water wheels? We can power things with water wheels. We don't we don't just have what? to use cranks the whole time. There's water wheels. There's windmills. We why have I been why have I been cranking this entire time? Because we'd have to take the whole thing up and put it back down the whole time for this. This makes sense to to crank. You made me manually press the mechanical press. Well, yeah, because we had to do it like six times. This is our basics. Okay, this is this is the equivalent of getting a hold of the ender or of, of the uh, nether portal before you can do like half the progression in regular. I didn't vanilla, even okay? realize water wheels are an option. Oh my god! Yeah. Go make one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Why are you sitting? Why okay. are you sitting here? Jeez. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I made us not just water wheels. I made us the big water wheel. So we do that, and then we get some we, we get some water flowing out. Hang on, I got. Oh. Well, okay, I don't think you're supposed to let it go both directions. Yeah, I think it. <laughs> I think it needs to go one way at least. Um. Hmm. Oh. 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 Yeah. And I'm full caveman mode again. It's just. <laughs> Earl, Earl, Earl see, is see. Lloyd discovering fire. Okay, so it go. It go. That's an understatement. That that's fascinating. Oops, and I it, just yeah, and that it one. is uh, it is clunking. Yep. And oh. If I place it like I don't know here, it go. You, you've been busy over here already. Yeah. So basically, we'll need like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, like fifty of these. <laughs> I have four. The more of these we put in, then the more, it, the, then yeah, the more power it produces. Um, we can't see exactly how much stress it's putting out unless we have the goggles. The goggles tell us. The more faces oh, are the powered, iron. the faster the wheel will rotate. So this has top, side, and the bottom, I'm assuming. Yeah, we can definitely somehow make this work and... Uh... Yeah, so I don't think we want to go like a full dam yet. I do think it. Yeah. This may be a better idea because uh, they do have a, some sort of a limit. I'm just looking at it, like thinking to myself, wondering like which way it would actually be spinning in a real hydroelectric dam and stuff like that, and like just giggling about it. Well, the other way because I would assume that the the current goes inside this thing, not outside. Uh, so. Yeah, but well, this work. Like from the ocean and into the river. So I made this yeah. exactly backwards, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's still something for right now, so. One thing at a time, okay? You are kind of ex-blasting yeah. ex my brain right now. Yes, I that's want fair. to get a nice water mill first and foremost. And okay. once we got a mi water mill, we'll mill it over. Badum I... Yeah. No, I'm not sure whether to smack you for that or use that as the set name of my second episode.
Well, I hope it's ready for me to see, because I kind of can't not see part of it over at the hill of the stage. Oh. Because <laughs> this is essentially uh, birch and dark oak and barely even any modded blocks. And just look at oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like... I the, the windows, though. Like, what is going on with these windows? Hello? Oh, those are but they're desks. So those are tables. <laughs> Uh, tables oh and shelves gosh. mostly. Uh, for the windows, th there's like ladders used as decorative pieces. There's a lot of very in inventive stuff in this. Oh wow! Yeah. No, I like them. I like the way you've used these for arches. That is so silly, and I, it's it's good. Thank you. I wish it was a little bit more spacious on the inside and had like more other rooms. But I'm get I'm getting like I actually better not build on the biggest scale and the biggest like. Uh, kind of a ambition for the time being because well we don't really have that many materials available to us yes that and but this this will still be plenty of big to put anything that we might want in a mill so we can put like our food production yeah. over in here and, and stuff like that if we don't then the on this underhang like in between mm -hmm. the support pillars i'm perfectly willing to add a whole other floor down here as long as it doesn't like oh. obstruct the view of the big uh, decorative cog of the wheel, because I actually really really like it. I don't think we'll be uh, ma making this into a proper like bridge across the river after all. More importantly, I cannot wait to get that big cog spinning. So that's gonna be just amazing looking. What what do you mean? What what do you mean spinning? Well. I mean, there's spinny things that you can do for windmills, so I presume we can adapt it to that. Like, it's not going to generate power, but it's going to look cool. Wait, can it can it actually just decoratively rotate full-on yes. Minecraft blocks? Yes. So this whole wheel, we can make it mm -hmm. also spin. Yes, we're going to need some glue first, and we're going to need some other components I don't remember the name of, but uh, we can absolutely make that sucker spin. Oh my god, this mod's insane. We gotta. Yeah, we, yeah. we gotta. All right, so All right. what we're gonna need in order to get that thing moving, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, we're gonna be able to. We're gonna need to be able to glue it all together. Okay. So that the game understands that that is one piece of stuff and can leave the rest of the world behind. All right, so is there like a glue in the game? Yes, there is glue, and that is made from slime. Ah. Slime. We can actually make from oh. dough and lime green dye, but everything All for right. lime green dye involves a millstone. So we're working backwards here on it. Ah, you just Damn gotta it. get used. So. You just, I'm telling you, in this game, you just gotta get used to slime always taking the opportunity to be a nightmare to get. Yeah, no, it will, but um, you know. It, this is this is one of the simpler ones. What even is a millstone? A millstone is just a cogwheel on the side casing and polished, just polished some like a rock. We're finally moving in. Our first contraption um, for in here. I don't. Where are we how, putting how it? How to rotate it? By getting power over to it. So. Oh, all right. So we need to like lower this boy back into it. <gasps> Actually, no. We just cram a cog down here, and that's it. Okay. We can just uh, insert this into the middle of the whole sucker for right now, and and it's moving. Look at it; it's milling. Yep. I built this giant thing called mill. And here's the mill. And here, the, 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 yes, it's and one block. We can have mills for different things, and we can also let this whole thing power plenty of other things. But for right now, I'm throwing a stack of lavender in here and hoping for the best. All right. That's gotta be at least six. Like, just on the sheer numbers, that's gotta be six exactly. And since this particular flower is actually gonna be giving us green, not lime, then mm, I we will do need white, hum. yeah. So we'll have to combo it. But this will give us more than just crafting wood, so... Anyway, the mill's been running all, n all night now, and we're still not done. <laughs> Admittedly, the night was two minutes, so... Feel free to right-click on it anytime to see what's in it so far. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh. whoa, I didn't oh. realize you need to right-click to actually get something out of it. Uh, oh, yeah, we, no. We got green like... dye. And once, oh, we, once we make it into lime, that's two of them. So we'll get at least one super glue, I'm hoping. Yeah. We need to put da, 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 the wheat through, too. Duh. Yeah, absolutely. Because we need 
we need dough. Um, I got a bucket of water. There are other ways to make the dough later, but for right now, I'm just using a bucket of water with the flour. All right. Or, and then I'll let you do the honors of turning it all into glue. Uh, I gave you the lime dye and a piece of dough, and I'm going to go. make another piece of dough because I think it needs two. Yes. It ends up being, yep, iron shit and iron nugget. So you were right. It's a shit. It's not, it's not a full ingot. And... Uh, Okay, let's see if I can uh, figure out how to glue this thing together. Hmm. I just wanted to see if it was even going to glue underwater, because I've never... Uh... But it should. See, basic logic implies that no, it won't. Because <laughs> it's, it's water. Exactly. But, um... Hmm. No, first position selected. Sweet, okay. That's the first part of it. And I can connect it to parts, right? Like, I can make it a little bit more shapely than just a giant cube. Yes. Yes, you may. All right. I've never used the glue directly, though. I, again, <laughs> I am working from YouTube knowledge. <laughs> yes, you may, she said. Yes. Making it up. Now we just need to actually tell it to get rotated. Exactly. And that thing is called a bearing, and I'm going to find out how to make that. Um, wow. Shaft, slab, and andesite casing. That's hilariously easy. Okay, I'm gonna ponder it real quick, if you don't mind me pondering in public. Ponder away, sure. Alright, so we just... Probably... We can just get away with replacing one of the big blocks, like, that are the main rod, with a bearing. Mm -hmm. And it should probably pick it up immediately. Replace this with a shaft, this with a No, this is not a bearing. No, we, ju we just okay, okay. This is the part of the of the yeah. of the sticky part. You just put the bearing here, facing that way, and well, you see, after you place it, it's either gonna rotate or ah! oh no! <laughs> well, congratulations, <laughs> we we invented the drowning apparatus. Uh, I was not expecting that to, to launch me quite so fast. I was but, not expecting it um, to move immediately. Holy crap, well, look at the vigor. Well, it was the rotational force already. Exactly. Look, <laughs> at, look at the speed. It might be a little fast. <laughs> yeah, it seems a little bit uneven on, in places as well. Building underwater is a little bit of a headache. Um, but that just adds to the rustic aesthetic, you know? So we, we're just we're just gonna let it let it let it keep going as is for right now then. I mean, what what do you suggest we do? Slow it down to a reasonable pace. Tell it politely yet firmly <laughs> to stop. Eventually, L like I said, I feel like eventually. But it already like, tried no, to I drown you. I don't think we have like any. <laughs> I'm more afraid of it than it is of me. So <laughs> it just I don't know why it looks so goofy. It's just because of how fast it's going. <laughs> It absolutely is just because of how fast it's going. It's going at the exact same speed as the other ones, but this yeah. one has a wider radius, so it looks way faster. Hold on, exactly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. try and get it to... Whoop! <laughs> Dude, this is awesome! <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, stop, stop carrying me around! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, my apologies to anyone with motion sickness in the audience, including myself! Ah, we're on the side! I think it's going the, wrong, so, the opposite direction it's supposed to as well. Yeah, I think so, but remember we said the whole shebang was, so, you know. There's something so deeply unnatural to it, and yet it's like the most beautiful thing, because it's like my little, my little purely decorative house. Doing its thing. It's so cool. It has moving parts. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, I've put on shaders. I'm, let me tell you. Yeah, it's definitely up there on the list of I the mean... most beautiful things <laughs> I've ever made in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, yeah, get it going somehow. No, I'm I'm real happy with how it turned out. I'm I'm glad that we did this. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's just. The, are those fish? I think the salmon being also. No, Meal. those are lobsters. Oh, that's worse somehow, huh? They're going for a ride. Well, I guess we're having seafood for dinner tonight. Um, anyway. <laughs> Create episode one. Uh, what a concept. 
<laughs> what a concept. Water concept. What a concept. Huh? 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 No. Yes, we've got so much more to do. This is going to be so exciting. And yeah, I, uh, I'm i psyched. I'm psyched. Next time we got to fill up that mill with contra contraptions and get food that's not just bread going. And ah, I'm excited. Today on Create, I'm gonna build an iron factory. But remember, this is modded, so we're not doing any villagers or golems or nothing. And it's even gonna make some more materials for us. Honestly, everybody should have one like this in their world. And because this is me we're talking about, it's gonna look like this. Whoa! Oh yeah, that's looking pretty snazzy. So without further ado, how is this gonna work? Check out what we can do if we throw cobblestone into the mill. Oh, gravel. Yeah, you get gravel. And gravel can be washed using this fan contraption. Um. So if a fan blows into a water source, and this fan is blowing its soul out, I, <laughs> I love it. Um, these like blue particles will wash whatever is dropped in here. So if I drop gravel in here, gives you iron nuggets. And also flint, but that's oh. that's very minor. Did we get it? Yes. Uh, I got nuggets. mostly. I have one piece of gravel left still. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? Yes. It means we can make iron from cobble. Yeah. So now as long as we can get infinite supply of cobblestone somehow, uh, we're absolutely golden. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm content with that. How do I get out of this though? Oh yeah, that that's a funny thing. Oh. <laughs> 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 ah! Ah! Done it. Uh, let's go make the prototype. I'm not placing lava in this very wooden house. Oh, yeah, I don't even know if a fire takes on or not. Hmm. Well, there is one way to find out. Uh, did you know that this can be placed this I way? I legitimately did not. I didn't. Okay, please work. Okay, we're going. We're going! Let's go! Okay. Automated cobblestone generation! What a time to be alive, huh? Um, we could make one that was wider and have it go ahead and do multiple blocks at once, or, uh, you know, we could just use the stone that already exists. Well, that's not fun. Like, you have to dig that stuff. Enough. Like, we don't have to go dig it by hand. Oh, it's it's not fun, you say. You, you realize we can combine the drill with the mining. Oh! We can make it go! Yes. We can make a drill that go. Tunnel bores. Right? Yes, exactly. That's what I'm talking. Tunnel bores. We can, we can go down there and we can really strip mine. Oh, okay. Color me impressed. Uh, do we actually have the stuff to, uh, to get to make that a reality? Uh, probably not. And uh, to be completely honest, I'm kind of lacking on stuff in general. Um, I'm, I'm kind of down to an apple and some salmon. Um, singular left. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, at this point we got completely derailed because drills in Create are freaking awesome. So the bad news is I only had enough andesite alloy to make uh, 11 of the drills, so that'll have to do for now. I don't know. And do we want to make it wide? Like, I figure this makes sense, more sense than making it wide, you know? Oh, oh, nope. That's the opposite direction from where we want those to face. There. So there's the drills. There's a couple of those on the back, and uh... I like how you made it dummy thick. Listen, that was not intentional. All right. Seriously though, how how is this penguin on a unicycle is supposed to do anything? Well, you see. Not like that, apparently. I forgot to put the glue on. Put it back there. Okay, cool. Okay. Now we try this again. You ready for some absolutely like 1000 IQ moves? Yes, let's do it. Boom! <laughs> oh. Um, Put it in. Let's do yep. this. Oh, wow. It's actually kind of yep. working. That's impressive. All we have to do is mine out our one by two and put and put the the mine carts on there, and boom, we've got it. Fair enough. But a uh, quick question: Why can't I access the 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 butt end of the thing? Oh, we have to turn it back into a knot contraption first. So. Oh. And uh, eh? Oh. <laughs> um. Uh, how do you it spun it? the whole thing around for some reason? Wow. There. Hey, it goes. I mean and it digs faster, the faster it goes. Look at this. No, for real. 
Well, it'll get to the end of its thing, and uh, we'll we'll see how much we've gotten from it that far. So yeah, drills deserve their own episode. I mean, obviously. But right now, what's important is that we dug up actually enough materials for me to get building. And so I got building. Anyway, and this is where I would put my iron farm, if I had one. We can fix that, you know, we, we, like, we can actually turn it into a real iron farm and not just a machine that piles up gravel, too. In one breath, you neg. You neg my I'm iron sorry. farming. I'm sorry. Well, it wasn't really an iron farm, okay? It was a cobblestone crusher, okay? It milled cobble. Oh. It did more for iron production than you ever did. Have you seen how much I've dug up? Yeah, you've dug it up. It's not production. That's extortion at most. It's it's theft. Anyway, yeah, hi, oh welcome. This is the Iron Foundress building. Do you like it? Yes, I do like it a lot. It is very spacious. We redlined the entire island. Like, we know where every single building on the island is gonna be for the next however many episodes. We don't know what the building is gonna do. I wanna, I wanna point no. it out. We have no bloody idea what any of these, like, squares on the map are gonna be, but all of them are actually gonna be buildings of sorts, and we have, like, sketches and plans, and Lee has already outlined all of these sidewalks. And uh, we just need to actually put the iron farm into this place because I've gotten wind of such a thing as a gutter exist. Yeah, yeah, and they're really expensive. So, step one, as before, we're gonna put together a cobblestone generator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are chain drives, and what it means is that if I put these on here and then give this a crank, oh, well, apparently for one, I, <laughs> yeah, I can't crank it myself, but um, what what it will do? Yeah, they're oh they they go they go the same way, which is totally not necessary for the drills, but it's gonna look better. And the recipe is just some iron nuggets over on the side casing. Yeah, you're putting the chain in it. But they all rotate in the ro in in the same direction. Correct. Yeah. So step one here is to get actual rotational power into the building. Luckily, Tia has taught me of the wonders of boiler power. So we can actually just, you know, set up this sucker right here, store some campfires under it, pack it with some water, and get ourselves uh, some power getting out of here. So this is a fluid container, then? Yes. So just... Okay. Yeah. You don't do it like that. We need pumps in order to fill it with water. Um, right. Well, you can just set up an infinite water source just hidden in the floor right here for it to pump out of. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, and then we can trick it into sucking via its own power, right? Exactly, yeah. So we just crank it to get the water started, and then from there it does its own thing. <laughs> right, one here, one here. Do I have a crank on me? I do not. It's still not sucking. Well, we haven't um, hooked up the... Oh, like, this hooked I, wa up I was sucking in the wrong direction. Hold up. Behold! I made it auto-suck. I mean, it was gonna do that in a minute anyway, but um, this works. This is this is a good temporary solution. It's the independent suck. It poop. What what more do you want from me? It's a hole in the wall. I'll fix it eventually. Oh, you already made the thing. I already made them. Ta-da! So this is a boiler now. So it's passive. It's getting enough water put into it. Oh. I think it didn't have enough space. It Yeah, it literally was just a lot of space. Um, plus, we could easily divide it out. Or we could put a second boiler on the other side. That's an option as well. Look, all I know is I'm gonna take a big wheel, and then I'm gonna attach a big wheel, and then I'm gonna take a small wheel, and I'm gonna attach a small wheel. In a desperate attempt to squeeze a little bit more power out of this poor contraption, which clearly ha has not been equipped. 
uh, for dealing with this entire situation. Step two is we make cobblestone generator and harvest it using drills. Okay, and if I did everything correctly, then we should get ourselves seven nice blocks of obsidian. With oh, change. Oh. <laughs> it's going. Is it? It's going. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, you know what? what? I was, I was six. I was real concerned. But frankly, uh, yeah, I need to lower the volume. Holy crap! This is, uh, this is distractingly swift. Now we need to mill this cobblestone and get gravel out of it. Honestly, uh, we're just gonna put. Okay, look, look, look. What, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the seven things. We put a water source down exactly the middle. And half goes left and half, half goes right! Good water source it. Or, you know, we could convey our belt. Yeah, we could go ahead and have uh, half of it land in one direction and half in the other. And still um, have just... several meals working on it, because this is definitely faster than one can handle, I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm gonna level with you. This is right now coming out and... It's a, it's a little bit of a mess because the cobblestone generator won't shut up. But uh, other than that, this is just coming out brilliantly. Uh, yeah, uh, start putting in conveyor belts the way you showed me. This, oh, this yeah. is great. No, so we've got one on the floor here. We've uh -huh. got an encased chain drive. So these two will go the same direction as each other there. Brilliant. And then mm -hmm. we can hook it all up to power <gasps> with one like that. So they even convey power. The belts! Yes! And diagonally and easily, you don't need like cogs and chain drives or anything, it's so con convenient! And then, check this out, we put a chute down mm -hmm. here, so it, it immediately picks up so it doesn't like do a leap. We sh the chute goes into the millstone and you see this little gearbox that I placed? Yep. Just so happens that if I attach a large cog to this gearbox, uh... then the power from this conveyor Powers this cog, powers this mill, and we just need to wash this gravel now and somehow sort whatever remains into a separate flint and ingot pile. That's like my only concern is the sorting. Like, how, do, how are we gonna do that? Um, that I do not know. That may require more intensive research. I know that there's filters of some kind, I just haven't used them yet. And now we just need to wash that gravel and get the iron nuggets somehow away from the flint. Which is kind of difficult when you realize that washing actually moves items. Yeah, that's a brain teaser if you ever saw one. So, uh, here's the general uh, situation with the current setup. We wanted to dr get all of the cobblestone and then whisk it away to the mills. I decided against it. I decided that it would be just simpler and more logical if we outputted the cobblestone directly into the mules. Which does make sense, yeah, and does help with the bottleneck, because at least now if it's bottlenecking on the cobblestone, we don't have to see it and we, we aren't aware it's well, a problem. Well, that's the thing, though. Um, all these mules are now spinning at a speed at which they process cobblestone faster than it gets oh. uh, generated. So, we've been producing uh, gravel over here. Uh, we lost one thing from the previous uh, assembly, and that is we lost okay. the incredible moment where all the cobblestone was raining down from the generators. So that's a little upsetting. Yeah. Fortunately, we can do this. So oh, we can at least so see gravel start. rain down through the chutes. And yeah, uh, so. yeah, and from here we just are a little bit stuck because we need to process all this gravel. We need to wash it. So we need a fan, we need a, a, a bucket of water. That will produce flint and iron nuggets. And we only want the iron nuggets. So we need to figure out some way of filtering them apart. And before you t say, uh, there are item filters obviously in Create. The problem is we're nowhere near that progression line because that requires brass. We don't have brass yet. Yeah, and I'm still... Well, any chance we had of getting easy brass is now kind of out the window because both of the nearest blaze spawners have been taken already by others. And that's when I had my greatest brain blast yet. Okay, cool. Now, the, the, the entire comment section and also you just don't, don't kill me now. You know how we're gonna separate iron from flint and gravel? 
Oh. We're gonna build a vanilla Minecraft Titan filter. I got I, I got the hoppers on me. Go fetch me the the the, the, the comparator. We, I don't think we have any quartz. We have another portal back at spawn here. You you deal with the conveyor belts in the meantime. Then you figure out how that's gonna go. I I'm gonna go get rid of all this flint in my inventory and <laughs> head to the Nether. Sure, why not? Lee, I don't say this lightly. This might be the single stupidest thing we've done. Yet. Yeah, it's not exactly the most elegant solution, but it, I think it is a good solution until we do get brass technology. But yeah. does it work? It does. It does. Ain't, the, ain't that a mind bender? Like, what the heck is any of this? I want me to explain what the heck is any of this. Um. Part of the interruption, we already know, produces gravel. Then the gravel is transported all the way here, where it's yeeted on top of a regular vanilla Minecraft item filter. And then right on top of the item filter, it gets washed and becomes either, you know, the iron nuggets, which is what we want, and iron nuggets go directly into the filter and go into the chest below, or it becomes flint and gravel and just sits there for five minutes until it despawns. Is this an absolute nightmare for the server to run? That is a genuine question. Yeah, that I don't... Probably. Let's argue that it's basically one gravel per second because we've got five of these going. That is at most 300 pieces of flint sitting around at any given time. It's not ideal, but it's not awful either. Yeah, and it gets rid of itself, it's self-cleaning, yeah? So, we're actually yeah. kinda fine. And here's the thing, here's the thing. I did want to suggest that we also craft up the iron nuggets directly into iron ingots, because we can actually do that using the uh, the mixing. But here's the trick though, we might want the iron nuggets themselves, because they're very convenient for making andesite alloy. Yes. They and are. andesite alloy is made of andesite, which drum roll can be made later down the line out of gravel and flint uh -huh. yeah we definitely need to revisit this baby and figure it out to where it becomes more of an undesired alloy factory we know exactly we got a ton of space and also probably a good spot for creepers to drop on us from alternatively we just make a second one of these it's fine it's not, not a big deal my one request is that next time we do something like this we build the machine first and um, the building around it second. I almost like that idea, but I actually still think that building the buildings first so that we can fit them on the island and then fitting within the constraints might be better. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, maybe something like that. We'll test it the other way for next time. <laughs> it's going to be even more of a disaster. You just know it. That, that disaster I'll at least be meeting in an iron armor. Oh my god, I can finally find Yay. it. Uh, we made a chest plate! <laughs> all of our all of our shenanigans ended up with just enough iron to make an iron chest plate. You know, I think I think we can st we, we should stick to digging with the drills for the time being. You think? Now if only a uh, server error hadn't eaten my drill. My thing I I played that, but I'm actually really, really happy with this. Like between the building and the contraption itself. So that's my first ever farm in Create. I think it came out pretty great if I do say so myself. Today on Create we're building the ultimate Create workshop. We want to develop our island swiftly, so we'll need every kind of crafting available in the mod. And most importantly, we'll need the brass. Which means lots of new cool technology, but also means going to the nether. Yeah, that's not something I look forward to. But first, we'll need a swanky building to put all that in. So let's start this episode with an epic time lapse.
Lee, allow me to introduce you to our newest workshop tower. That's uh, that's a lot of tower. That's a lot of workshop. Lot of we can fit in it. It's uh, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be great. Yeah. It, pff, all right. What, what are we putting in here? What are we putting in here? Well, the long story short, everything. I don't actually know what we do need as like create players. So I just uh, gave us a giant area to, to work with and uh, that's about it, honestly. Oh. Okay. See, my original idea, right, was like, hey, you know, players need a lot of space. Yes. I'm gonna build like this giant penthouse at the very, very top where we can put all okay. of the machinery we need and all the instruments and all that. But then I realized how much of a nightmare it's gonna be having to climb like a ladder or even fly on an elytra up there every single time we need something. Yeah. So also, I also did this giant room where we can also put everything that we need. And then maybe in the penthouse we'll make some, you know, recreational facilities. Two everything, one at the top, one at the bottom. I don't know, we, we may eventually have like jetpacks or something, who knows. Okay, this is awesome and all, but th this is a little bit more time sensitive than that. I've, uh, I think I broke the iron farm. You, the... well, you, you couldn't break it because I fixed it. You fixed it. Okay, cool. You probably. Yeah, we didn't really show this on camera because uh, I kind of did it at like one in the morning uh, <laughs> while barely being a human being. But you know how I was like, hey, and in a perfect world, we would be like storing the gravel and storing the iron and storing the flint. I did all of that. Yes. Welcome um, to Iron Farm 2.0. Check this out. For one, we got the Zombert. Yay! The most important part by far. Mm. Only washed gravel will, will reach here. Then the product, so the Nikes, go up into this chute, down into this okay. chest here, and we're once again using vanilla Minecraft redstone to sort out Nikes and sort out flint. Right? So the flint okay. then goes into this chest and once this chest overloads, it goes into this vault. And the beautiful thing about that is that if we ever need to automatically feed nuggies or flint or gravel into something else that isn't this factory, check this out. The vaults are sticking out from the back! Nice, nice. All right. Yeah, that factory is dummy thick. We never need to enter the factory ever again. The Zombert will go and visit it for ages. Because if we need something, we can just drag it out of these item vaults from the back of the factory into the next factory. Okay, yeah, I don't know how to access these, but I guess we'll solve that afterwards. But uh, yeah, uh, the thing is, is that this stuff was already here when I started AFK. Uh -huh. And I think you saw all those iron ingots that were in there. Yeah, that's a fresh product. Okay, I want you to imagine how much flint came with that. It was backed up past the double chest up there. Things weren't <sighs> picking up from the conveyor belt anymore. Were the filters broken? Yes, there was ah. flint in these two, which means there's probably flint in that vault. Okay. Well, I guess I, I do have a un way of addressing that. This is why I don't like things that don't have inventory access. List. It's fine! Oh, no. Don't worry about it. Oh god, it's disgusting. Oh god, they all have... Ah, this, ah. We're gonna have to make some sort of a situation that like stops the contraption when the flint chest is filled. That's not gonna be much of a problem, to be completely honest. We can make it so that this never happens ever again. And also thank you for RFK and like, the old, old iron blocks are pretty nice. This is a clutch. When it receives redstone power, we can bl stop any contraption, stop any shaft from ro rotating. So basically this, and Karchungus, and the entire farm stops. I'm just gonna have a redstone line running up to here and uh, tell the entire contraption to stop doing anything. Please, dear god, stop doing anything. <laughs> this is shoddy, this is garbage. But it will probably prevent the entire system from collapsing, which is all I really want from it right now. What do we need to get that brass? Uh, we need a blaze. That That's really everything we need. It's we, we need a blaze burner. And for that, we mm. need some iron sheets, some netherrack, and then we have to go catch a blaze. Why do you mean catch it? Uh, I mean that we take these little cages and we literally right-click the blazes with them. 
Well, all right. Let's go fetch some blazes then. Do you really didn't want to go to the Nether in this thing, but uh, I guess we're doing it, aren't we? I really do hate the modded nether, but now that I'm staring down a crimson forest with no gold on, I'm like, what do I hate more? I don't know. <laughs> well, don't worry, it's uh, not like we're going into an even more dangerous place. Is this player placed nether brick or uh, did we actually reach another fortress? I think we actually reached the nether fortress if the thing on the ow, the little punk. Well, okay, um, yeah, that, well, that, that one. Answer, <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, the advancements are telling. Yep. I can hear a blaze! Oh, I can yeah. hear a... Get in my belly! Oh, really? It's, it's just right-clicking. It's literally it's just, just right-clicking! Right we don't even have to fight yeah, it! it is literally just right-clicking. It is literally easier than actually fighting them. The problem is, is that every blaze spawner in this place has already been claimed. As in, ah. like, removed. So okay. that may be the only blaze we find. Well, the thing about that is that, uh, yep, there, there we go, it's gone. <laughs> no, the thing about that is that blazes actually spawn passively within the nether fortresses. So we don't need a blaze spawner. Oh my god, Lee! What? You were wrong, and I have never been. So happy to prove you wrong. Oh, oh, we have a spawner. We have a spawner. And you can just right click the spawner itself as well. Why was I afraid of doing this? Ah! Uh, okay, Blaze Because the modded nether sucks usually. Yeah, okay, fuck. I forgot that we had to actually walk here. Yay! Let's get the heck out of there. Uh, there's another mosquito. I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> I figure the ideal place to put this is in the new workshop, right? Oh yeah, I cannot wait to actually do something with this space. Where do we want it? Like, I think the elevator controls will be over here, so we can't put it along this wall. Where, where, where do we want to put it? I just, I don't know. Any place? We're, we're gonna move it anyway. Just plop it down the center, whatever. Oh, look at him! Look at the little fella. Here's a stack of copper. Here's a stack of zinc. Uh, do we need and to now, actually hit the boy? Yes. All right, there we go. And then spinny spin yeah. spin. Yeah. It output six brass ingots so far, and then it gave me back the, the stuff. Oh, all right, all right, all right, Heck all right. Yeah. This we can do with. This we can work with. Yes. Awesome. Uh, now then, this, well, for one, I think we should get your redstone link set up over there to, to get rid of that whole comparator line. Like, I know you worked hard on it, but, uh, yeah. Right, uh, what, what is a redstone link? It's, it's wireless redstone. No, for real though. It's a remote control. Oh, it really is just, yeah, we need the competitor thing, but we can't spare ourselves a giant, you know, bit of redstone being spilled all over the, the shop. Okay, wonderful, but, uh, how, how we make one? <laughs> and that's it. We don't need a giant contraption. Could I just lever on it? Oh, true. Well, it don't work, so... Yeah, everything's definitely still pretty going. How exactly did I mess it uh, up? Oh, I, it needs to be in the receive mode! Look! Ooh. Yeah, you just I just need to shift right click it and... Now it doesn't work! Which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, okay, I hope that this is gonna shut it off remotely. It's a little bit hard to Ideally test right now, due to, you know, the, the nature of what a hopper is. Alright, this should take care of our overflowing issues. It should definitely take care of the overflowing issues, and... Until the iron starts overflowing, which I doubt it ever will, honestly. Yeah, number one, I think we're gonna use it faster than that, and number two, by the time that it's uh, doing that, we're gonna have some kind of factory that will, you know, be taking it straight from here anyway, so. Now, with the Iron Foundry finally fixed, once and for all, hopefully, it's time to assemble our ultimate workshop. So as cute as the mixer is, I don't think we should leave him just like sitting in the middle of the room like this. We're gonna want to pack as much in here as possible and we need like, you know, blower fans, we need the stampy stampy. I don't know the technical names for any of these things, but I know we've got a lot to fit in. Here. Well, the first and foremost, we need to migrate most of the 
uh, water mill because that exactly. thing has all of our stuff. Uh, but there are definitely like, things on my wish list about this thing uh, that uh, I would like to implement. Like, can I have a sign for mode? So this is gonna be the elevator because I'm not gonna climb all the way up to the flipping penthouse every single time I want to do that. And uh, frankly, I don't actually know anything else about this. Uh, I know this pokery thingy magics that like apply things via poking with a finger. So we'll want one of those. Um, we yes. probably will want the some sort of a storage area somewhere, maybe like a floor above, but still somewhere around. You know what I realize? Um, now that we got brass, we can do shape crafting. Yes, we can do shape crafting, and that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That about fit perfect in there. Like the maximum is like five by five of, of the shaped crafting, or seven by seven, or something. Five by five, I think. Yeah, if you just want like a manual one, we put in it here. Yeah, I like how it would be like this public telephone booth of like, oh, do you need to shape craft something quick? Okay, cool, just roll it up here, put in the recipe, click it. 3D printing of the future. I know, right? Am I gonna just force Liara to do all the interior decorating for me? Yes, absolutely. I already built the actual building. It's only fair she also contributes. Actually, while Lee's out there doing the interiors, I also wanted to secretly quickly uh, do a thing over here. A thing I discovered and was actually really upset that we haven't found it earlier, because it would have been so cool. Well, it's gonna be cool right now instead. So check this out. These are Nixie tubes and they're made with two electron tubes and they are pretty handy. So electron tubes are just polished rose quartz, which uh, rose quartz is just regular quartz, but with redstone all over it, plus there's plenty of it in the nether. Next up, we supposed to sandpaper it and get this little polished rose quartz. And yes, it is killing me slowly that the sandpaper is essentially just paper and sand. Like this is the most galaxy brain crafting recipe they could have made for it. Now we just attach a couple of them to a couple of those and we got ourselves two lamps, actually eight lamps, just like that. And yet, in theory, these are supposed to like show you exactly what strength redstone signal is and that kind of stuff. But honestly, I am obviously primarily interested in them as a way to display messages, because apparently you can just right click to move the name tag and it doesn't even consume the name tag! That is so handy! Especially since we can just haunt a book and quill into becoming a name tag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get these back, because check this out, they can be put freaking sideways! This is amazing! And this should just... Yep, there we go! Now it says workshop! Oh my god, why haven't we made these? so much earlier nothing was stopping us we had the materials anyway now that this place is officially a workshop <laughs> let's go check out what liara did with the interiors welcome come on in um from right to left we have a uh, mechanical press that goes into a basin so we can actually potentially make you know flint and stuff now uh we have a mill you know how mills work we have this guy right here which uh, allows us to mix things with or without heat we have this right here which is going to come in handy uh for well deploying things we can put things in the hand and it applies them more precisely than we can. And then this you're also familiar with, which is just a normal mechanical press. We have toolboxes, many, many of them. Only one of them has stuff in it so far. We have a kitchen, finally. We have uh, this elevator that you decided to install as a temporary fix. I mean, <laughs> I came back in here. Listen, there's like five no. different ways to make an elevator and create. Before we decide on one, I did, I still needed to go up. Yes, no, I appreciate it. It entertains me. Uh, we have this here, which uh, I haven't figured out how to install properly yet, but it's going to have a whole row of those deployers because some things require you to put multiple on. And uh, this is the the wall of fans. So we have the the washer, the smoker, the haunter, and the smelter. I like how even here you managed to install like a washing machine. <laughs> yeah, I thought they almost looked like vending machines. They're, they're very cute though, I like them. What is the difference between the like campfire and lava though? Um, so the campfire cooks things at a like 
mm -hmm. edible afterwards temperature. Uh -huh. So we can put food and kelp and stuff like that in there. Whereas this one smells like stone, iron, and all, all the traditional cookie. Oh, I didn't know that it dif differentiated. Yeah, no, it. Uh, I found that out the hard way with some of my bread. Like, it went bye-bye. All right, so that's pretty impressive looking. One question, though. Uh, what, what what the heck's the deployer? So yeah, the deployer the deployer basically does anything that a human hand can do uh, within the game, except for it does it more precisely and also automatically. And what I mean by more precisely is it can do things that we can't do. I can add it my sword, and it, and if we were to have mobs go in front of it, it would be able to attack with the sword. But we can also slap a golden sheet down here. Hand it a small cog, we hand it a big cog, and we hand it an iron nugget, and then we rinse and repeat. Um, and the point of this is, uh... Well, after we do this five times, this is going to hand us a precision mechanism, which we can then use for such advanced technology as, uh, oh, train controls, mechanical arms, and uh, my personal favorite at the moment, rotational speed controllers, because these are kind of slow. <laughs> yeah, that would that would probably increase the situation. So basically, it's, it's, it uses like a separate way of crafting, like a recipe sequence kind of a craft. Yes. And it yes. needs to be like a we... finger that like pops. Yes, it. exactly. Machine logic. Well, it broke, I think. Oh no, it I didn't! Think it's done. Look at it! Precision yeah. mechanism! Honestly, after all that headache, I genuinely cannot believe that we actually made one. Like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Well, that's what this up here is theoretically for. I was having trouble trying to remember how to arrange it, so I was probably gonna look up a tutorial, but uh, the idea is I put a row of those deployers. Mm -hmm. And then a second belt that comes back to drop the stuff off at the beginning again. Oh. And that way it can just loop through it until it finishes. There's a couple other mechanisms, including the vibration mechanism. Mm -hmm. I actually don't know what that one's used for, though. Oh, you're gonna love it. It's Speakers? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, also crafting terminal for, you know, Tom's simple storage mode. Oh. Yeah, we'll need one of those complicated boys. And speaking of complicated boys, I now realize that there's still one extra type of crafting that we don't haven't really employed, and that is the mechanical mm -hmm. crafter. Because there are recipes that require that specifically, and we already distinctly made a separate place for that to be organized. Yes, we had the room for it in here, but we'd also needed the brass technology for that. And there we go, the biggest crafting bench on this side of the island. It's, it's a big one. Well, I was about to say I don't even know what to do with it, but no, we need crusher wheels. This, that's the whole reason that we wanted this sucker to begin oh. with, was to make the big crusher wheels. Yeah, that's why that one <laughs> wall in the workshop is empty. Okay, how right. do we get uh, the, cr the, the crush? How, how, how do crush? Oh, it's just a bunch of andesite alloy. So all of this... We will need two of them, though. Yep, and down the middle is just some rock. Alright. There we go. Oh, oh. it's not fast. <laughs> it's not, but it's cool that it just went automatically as soon as the right stuff was in it. Well, it's not it's awesome. that. I'm pretty sure that it decides when to craft as soon as everything, every slot is finished. Oh. Yeah, which is why I made these, uh, the crafter slot covers. If we ever need to craft something smaller, we just cover up the ones that we don't need. And there we go. Crushing wheel. Okay. And look at this. You make two of them at a time. Oh, well, that makes yeah. life easy. All right. So what are we crushing first? <laughs> well, there is an achievement for getting into this. Yeah, I already got that. I mean, honestly, I just want to see what happens to a good bag of cobblestone. Though they are not the fastest. We they're satisfying still. He's producing gravel though. But then if we, yes. if we crush gravel, we yes. get sand and there's like clay and there's a bunch of stuff that we can do with these. This particular 
These two are specifically for the workshop though. For small batches. Like I have a bunch of that stuff that crushes down in a copper over there. Mm -hmm. So we can run a bunch of that through it, for example, stuff like that. So just to tally it out, we basically successfully accomplished every kind of a crafting that create allows for. I don't have any, like, I don't have enough of the crafters memorized here. Me either. But what I do have memorized is the one thing that you told me we're gonna do as soon as we get brass. And I think that would be the perfect finish for, like, today. Long day of, uh, you know, figuring out how to make about everything in the stupid mode. Uh, the only thing I remember is the speed controllers. What, what, what were you thinking? I was thinking, okay, okay, okay. The iron thumb, right? <laughs> yeah. We're just never gonna stop fixing it. Oh! But you know how on the second floor, on the third floor even, there is a clock tower without a clock? Oh! We can now craft the clockwork bearing and have an actual clock on the top of the clock tower. And now, like, where, where's the precision mechanism that we got? They're gonna laugh, it doesn't even require a precision mechanism. Time is not a precise science, Lee. Yeah, it, it, it's just an electron tube and a piece of brass casing. I'm at least happy that it still needed another technology, so I don't feel dumb that we didn't do it before now, but... Yeah. <laughs> no, it did require brass, so we, at least we got brass. Let's go. I, I want to at least have a mechanical crafter make it. This, this, this. Oh, oh okay. Go. Because it's called accumulating all the other ones. It's thinking hard about it. Yeah. It's yeah. It's real pondery on the topic. Hey. All right. We got it. There we go. <laughs> that was the silliest and least necessary thing, but I approve. Let's try and make the big the big arrow out of the girders. They're chunky enough. They should spice. Hey. And it, for some reason decided that only one of them. Is supposed to actually be glued on. First half of it. Vault? Yep, it has, uh, they have like really, really cute uh, ornament at the corners. That works? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Why it's it move so something? embarrassing. I wanted a clock on that tower so badly and we couldn't make one last episode. So much so that in the thumbnail for the last video, I actually just photoshopped a clock in onto the tower. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Because it just didn't look right without it. And now that it has one, it's just... I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah, it's good. I like it. And that really does leave us with just the specialized sequence crafting that we haven't really... haven't really automated in full yet. But that's a really good idea for the next episode, because do you know what the sequence crafting also allows for? Jetpacks. Oh, I was expecting something train-related. Jetpacks is real cool. I mean, look at the building I had to build today, and like, hmm, I wonder why I would want a jetpack. I'm kind of hoping that this is going to be close to as tall as it gets. This is already going to be a pain to get up and down. Eh. So I can't wait till we get that elevator, but jetpacks, that'll be even handier. Fox, please, in the comments down below, somebody tell us how to make an elevator. <laughs> There's like so many ways to make one and we can't decide on them. Yeah, we could have a rope pulley from the top, we could have a piston from the bottom, or we could just have a system of these flingers, to be completely honest. <laughs> nah, they do so much fall damage, yeah, I will not survive to the top. Well, that, that's where enchantments come in, but fair enough. Wait, how are you going to survive having a jetpack then? Um, I'll only fly over water. Today and Create, I'm going to craft every jetpack available in this mod and figure out what even is the difference. I want to build something incredible and I'll need all the flight I can get. I hope you like zeppelins and I hope you like fantasy flying ships because I've been dreaming of building one since I first opened this mod. So let's take it to our ultimate workshop from last episode and craft ourselves a jetpack. And I know what you're thinking, is this finally an episode where he's not gonna fix that darn iron farm? Psych! I added a minute hand to the clock. That is also something that would have been way easier to do if I had a jetpack. I should really get one! But turns out there's several jetpacks in Create and uh, yeah, we should, uh, uh, which one? The brass jetpack is uh, by far seems to be the easiest one to make. Uh, as opposed to the underside, just due to the engine, the steam engine in brass jetpack not being as complicated as the heat engine. But then there's also the hydraulic engine for the copper one, 
And here's the trick about that. All three jetpacks have different type of fuel that they require. For what I can tell, the brass one needs you to use both water and some type of fuel to actually fly. And the side one only requires fuel and the copper one only requires water, making it, in theory, the cheapest one out of the bunch. But the crafting mechanism for the hydraulic engine that it uses actually also requires a water spout installed at your sequence crafter. So this is gonna be a little bit of a headache, especially because I really don't feel like we should be crafting it the way Lee did last episode when she only used one of these deployers. I think the best way to do this is to get ourselves a conveyor belt, get a second conveyor belt, and just loop it, because that way I will have to right-click less. So we need to figure out sequenced crafting, or at least uh, a more automated solution for it. We need to figure out the engines, obviously. I would love to make all three and test them out. And we also need to potentially figure out the fuel tanks that we can make to expand the length for which we can fly. So yeah, quite an eventful episode ahead of us. I do want to do one more thing though before we begin. Check this out. These are called display boards and they have potential to be just absolutely amazing. So before I get into the, all the serious stuff, I just want to give myself a little treat and put these in here. Because we got the nice Nixie tubes marking our workshop already, it's only fair we get some sort of a sign for the public mechanical crafter as well. Please work, please work, please work! Hey, I was hoping it would be centered. Huh. Move aside, I'm about to type myself some space bars. Man, good thing that create like displays don't actually consume the name tags. Because otherwise this would be pretty flipping annoying and wouldn't be. There we go, that's almost centered. And now that we know that there's a mechanical crafting station in there, I can absolutely go and actually use it for some jetpacks. Just gotta make the parts for it first. Well, this took an embarrassing amount of finagling, but uh, look at that. I actually got a looping conveyor going on with four spots, which if I'm correct, I am really hoping that is gonna be enough for every engine. Okay, cool. We can do this. We just need the deployers now and we just need the actual spouts if we want to do the one that does, you know, steam and stuff. Naturally, this completely demolished the facade or at the very least, the side of the building. I could probably improvise and do something else, but uh, for the time being, I'm just gonna get a stone cutter and I'm just gonna abuse the vertical slab mechanic. And to think that in vanilla, I would have to, ow, use trap those in this particular situation. Ah! I appear to have miscalculated quite significantly. Okay, let's see if I can deploy my way out of this. Bloop, 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 and this is not the direction. Uh, can I? Can, can, uh, okay, this is just here now. What? Hey, did you know that like if you press shift, you don't actually go on the conveyor belt? Did you know also that if you press shift, you place <laughs> whatever you're placing backwards? Uh, yeah, those are not entirely compatible, to be completely honest with you. Okay, I am now very efficiently pointing at whatever's on the conveyor belt. Cool beans, I do believe that we have officially have accomplished the mythical thing I heard from a British friend called the Jiggery Pokery. Let's see if we can swindle it into actually becoming a thing. Small cog, big cog, propeller, underside alloy. And we get the underside alloy. And now if we just drop a sheet of brass in here, it should... Yup, okay, it, it's mechanisming. It's mechanisming again. And I should be able to just leave it now. Because it says it has a percentage, so it has a chance, a very small chance of not actually working out for me. But, you know, it does also need four full loops to actually be assembled. So I should probably just, you know, F1 and just stir it for forever. Oh, hey, look, it's done! Yoink! Get yoinked! There we go, steam engine. Now we just gotta get all of these things, which just so happens <laughs> I already have! Mmm, I wonder where it is. 
Well, good thing that there was a sign. Okay, please tell me I can do this by memory. Alright, so it's like... The general shot of it. A be belt buckle down the middle. This thing here, underside alloy on the three spots. And finally, we put some fans because those are the engines. Did, 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 did it happen? Did it <gasps> yes! Oh my god, I got it from the first try! Yeah! <laughs> no, I didn't. There are also cogs. And apparently it doesn't work anyway. Alright, that's a good sign. And there it is! Oh my god, so, there was so, so much malpractice today. So happy that it actually worked. What is it you do and how you do it, mysterious thing? This is apparently a brass jetpack. It actually requires both fuel and water. And I'm pretty sure that bucket of lava does count as fuel. So all I need to do is I put it into my offhand, I throw it. And maybe not. Uh, oh, hi. Young man, what, what, what is your problem? See, if my jetpack would just work, I would just fly away from you already. Actually, I don't... It's just... Oh, oh my god, since when do you have AI? <laughs> okay, have fun burning in the sun instead. Idiot. Yep, there he goes. Bye. Oh, it's not the fuel that you need to put into the offhand. It's the jetpack. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you... There we go. I guess fuel went in. We got 100 out of 1600. Oh dear, that's gonna be um, hmm, fascinating. Okay, just for the trash run, for the first run, let's just give it a go. And... Oh heck yes! <laughs> uh, I can even run in the sky with it! This is so cash money! Up, ah, crap, crap, crap. Can't I go higher though with this? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This says, you can fly to a maximum height of 17 blocks, but that's not 17 blocks on a Y level. That's 70 blocks from where you start, right? So it's a little bit less cash money than I would like. It does allow me to more easily get into my own house. Man, I've not been to the penthouse since I first built it. Can you believe it? And apparently I still won't be in it because I, I can't actually get in. Well, this is a revelation. <laughs> hey, I broke in! This is nice. This mod pack has like a separate button for you to crouch. So that's how I'm doing this. All right, all right, all right, all right. So this raises a question. If you have several jetpacks, which one can fly the highest? This is 17, this is 27. All right, so we do want the underside one. Which is kind of obvious because the heat engine... No, wait a minute. I would have to craft this and actually see. Which, mind you, it's just a regular four-step recipe sequence. This is not going to be an issue. I can literally make it. Uh. <laughs> there we go. Full damage who? I ask you. Okay, what's up with this time? Um, it's a uh, small cog, big cog, zinc nuggets, copper nuggets. And we already have the cogs in place. So we just... And oh my god, this recipe is so much easier than the other one. What's the catch? Okay. Go get them, champ. Um, big home contraption. Hey, look at that! We got a heat engine out of this. I wonder what a Oh my god, I can make a flamethrower. You actually, you know what? Make me a second one while you're at it. No reason. Building a jetpack by memory, take two. Oof. Okay, so it's uh Okay, so it's like a uh the, like a V out of this. And we got four fans this time, which Actually explains the range, you know, the up and down one. I'm pretty sure that up here is supposed to be a belt. Are the remaining ones zinc? I genuinely don't remember. No, wait, 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 wait. Obviously, this one is gonna be the, the, the thing, the actual engine. And I'm pretty sure maybe these ones are zinc? Ah, oh, I really should not be doing this by memory. My one hope is that I'm either right or I'm wrong and it's not gonna blow up everything. Because if it is gonna blow up everything, I mean, at least I'll have it on camera. Yep, 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 yep. I guess just bad. But I did have the recipe, right? I forgot the cogs, which are ever so hard to actually put into this thing because it keeps placing them instead. 
All right, we got the extra jetpack. Can I just feed it normal, regular planks? Just for funsies. Yeah, it is fuel, right? Like it's it, it's supposed to work. Huh, apparently that's 60 fuel. So just don't run out of it <laughs> midway through flying. Huh. Woo! Okay. So, logically speaking, this is just running. But if it was creative flight, I feel it would be entirely overpowered. This is actually just running, but up. You know, it's actually you just running on that ground, but you have stilts. You know what? It's still better, you know, still better. And you will never guess what happened midway from midway riding, huh? That's 60 fuel, so just don't run out of it <laughs> midway through flying. Midway for flying. Midway for flying. I, uh, I think we actually did run out of fuel, mate. So, and the side jetpack, big gloves, really, really endearing. Would still want to make the copper one, just for the funsies. But in the meantime, there's also obviously an issue. And that issue is that if I am to use the underside one, I will want fuel. And we do have fuel tanks. Oh, well, that's, that's just no way around it. One way or another, I will need to install a spout onto our conveyor belt. Okay, so here's why I freaking hate the spouts and liquids and anything to do with liquids, really, in Create right now. You cannot directly put anything into a container outside of fuel tanks, which you can just right click, by the way. They basically are back. But here's something I want to try out because I realized it. I could pump it out of a container that I can put manually into. And here's the star of the hour. This is a cauldron. <laughs> uh, and if this works, man, then what's the point of not being able to manually put liquids into anything? I can probably just... Uh-huh. And there it flipping goes. Astonishing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Does this also work with lava? Because cauldrons can hold that now, can't they? la da dee la da da Buckets of lava because obviously... It does work! Alright. So here's another trick that I want to execute here. I am gonna place a, a spout onto the conveyor belt. But here's the trick. Some of the mechanisms... Thank you for the heat engine. This is a secret tool that will help us later. Some of the mechanisms actually require you to have the spout at the beginning while others at the end. So how do we reconcile with that, right? What are we gonna do? And I think I got the answer. Because you see, this conveyor belt is looped. So if I want the spout to be in the beginning of the sequence, I can just place my material down there onto the conveyor belt right here-ish. And if I want it to be at the end of the sequence, I can put I can put it here and it will be at the end because the, the order goes everything else, spout. And if I place it here, then it's gonna be spout, everything else. And also apparently we can... Oh wow, we can make sweet rolls. Why are they sweet though? They're just bread and milk. Okay, we do actually have cows now because Liara brought a couple of them. Can we place milk in cauldrons? Just asking for a friend? Nah, I need a drainer specifically. Okay, I can't actually pump out of a drainer, so uh, yeah, we're doing this. Shplak. Chaga, 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 chaga. This was so unnecessary. Why did I make this? Actually, this is significantly better than the cauldron system. Or maybe it isn't. Because really, the only difference is it can do milk. I can finally lava this. We rotate immediately. And now we're ready for our crafting. Let's see what happens. Nothing happens. The recipe calls for a water. Okay, better rev up down the engines. It's going in. And there we go. This one's done as well. And you don't even need a mechanical crafter to make this one. I'm not gonna lie, this actually kinda has me confused because this seems like the more end gamey one just because it requires synchronous crafting and a spout. But at the same time, it also feels like not because it doesn't even need mechanical crafter. Am I an idiot? Is this like a very innocuous thing that I for some reason have been building up this entire time. Regardless, I think that this completes my fancy jacket collection. <laughs> yes, I know exoskeletons are also kind of fancy jackets. I'm, I don't really want to build one like right now. Okay, let's take her for a ride. 
amped even with a control? I don't know, is it? Is it meant that it... Is it meant to be just slower? Hold up, can I hot equip this? <laughs> no, I cannot, okay, I will I will need to actually unequip the old one before I can. The fuel one is so much faster! I mean, also it does fly higher, so I think I'll be undesigning it for the time being. For as long as I'm living inside of this, you know, giant building, because, I mean, come on, it, it is pretty cool to just kinda climb my way all the way up. Just gonna put this into the kitchen for a late night snack. Nobody will suspect them in the produce drawer. Well, what I'm quickly realizing is that this is a little bit, just a little bit too inconvenient after all for me to be using for building. However, this is great for squeal very, very speedy travel. And also what is absolutely brilliant for is doing what the water just did, canceling out fall damage. So in any building project, this would be a pretty cool aid. If I could use it correctly, that hurt myself. But that's just it. A building project. I've been kind of building up to it the entire video. But now that we have a jetpack, we can do something that is an absolute staple of the steampunk city and the steampunk fantasy that we've been working in style of. I am of course talking about a steampunk blimp. And I already have sketched out the exact design that I want to go for. So let's gather some materials and get in with that time lapse. You know, I told myself that this is gonna be a quick and easy build because at this point I can build a flying ship kind of with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back. But I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing right now you have a different question on your mind and that is, uh, Zloy, what is, is this thing not supposed to be like several miles into the air? Like was that not the entire point <laughs> of making this with, uh, what's it called? making this with a jetpack and you'd be right like you'd be absolutely correct to assume that but also this is creator plan and when i was building this and realized that i would have to struggle with skyblock building i suddenly had a little bit of a brain moment so this is glue and this is cut assembler and this is a minecart and if you remember correctly create has this cool thing where you can make a contraption so i'm gonna try right now to make a contraption out of this giant thing. I crafted two ex three extra super glue bottles. This better work. So here we go, this is the biggest gamble for all, all of their marbles. Whew, if this doesn't work, I'll be very upset. Not failing out. And it didn't. Oh no! <sighs> to prove the power of the flex tape, I split my ship in half! I mean, it's not super bad as the worst part, but it is kind of mental to, to just look at it and see. This is horrifying. Okay, 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 don't worry about it though. All right, no, look, okay, it's not, no time to panic. No time, no time like right now. If we just nudge this minecart in the opposite direction. <laughs> Ow! Okay, I got snapped something in half, but no, look at that! <laughs> I made this! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind right now, okay? I've put the ship together. Easy peasy. Uh, the entire point here also is that I can pick up contraptions using my wrench. Yep, you, you just do this and you have a contraption. So if I were to package up my entire, like, or at the very least the butt end of my entire ship into one of these contraptions, I could definitely segregate the entire design into several contraptions, like two or three of them, and then deploy them on whatever height I, I want. So here we go, and I cannot believe that we are actually doing it. 
Right. He's the cut assembler. He's the cut. He's the redstone signal. And as soon as I push, this better be good. Because if it's not, I'm literally gonna cry. Alright. Don't like in that sound. Because why would the doors open? But other than that... No! Look at that! Look at all of it! But no, 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 no. Now comes the best part. Because it's one thing that, yeah, we can move an entire build and then just make it pop back into existence from a different place. But we can also pick up minecart contraptions using a wrench. Oh, and it... Yeah, it did leave some things? But it definitely left way fewer than I would think. I cannot believe that this mod actually exists. I am dead serious right now. I don't know how this can just work. As if that's something that like is okay. <laughs> and you have to keep in mind, this is a f fully functional minecart contraption as well. I can very easily right now, check this out, loop this rail. Put it on, nudge it, and laugh hysterically as this giant flipping vessel starts moving on its own. Oh my god, this is actually really, really cool looking. I gotta make like a boat that is circling the island, sailing around here, just around the perimeter. It would look so cool. Oh my god. But not today. Today, we're taking this. And we're moving it up into the sky, at least 27 blocks. You know, the best part really is that once we're done here, once we place this thing back in its rightful place, it's not gonna forget that it's all glued together either. We will be very easily able to redo the entire thing. We will just easily grab it from the sky and put it somewhere else. Which is honestly a power that eliminates so, so much of an anxiety out of building. Because this is really is something that I would feel very anxious about. If, uh, you know, about the entire situation with the building. Like, one of the worst parts about building a flying vessel in the sky is that you're gonna build it and then suddenly build a really tall building and it's gonna be in the way. Like, that is the worst. But now if that happens... We just grab it and put it in a different place. Who cares? Can I actually do this? Almost. Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Easily. I can easily fly up here from the roof of my penthouse. This is great. Ah, oh, just needs a giant hot air balloon or some sort of a zeppelin. Yeah, we can also put together back on the ground and just kind of glue onto it later. Because we can definitely add a couple of wings to it as well. Oh, the possibilities are endless. That being said, Karchungus. Karchungus. Woo! I'm alive. I'm alive. And this thing is looking pretty cool. God, I wish it wasn't 8 in the freaking morning right now. I've been up all night building this and the balloon half isn't even built. Let's go time lapse in the balloon half. I have another half a night here. God, this beauty is worth every minute I spent building it. And it was such fun! It was so much fun too, thanks to this jetpack I got. Oh my god, this was amazing! I need to double check if I can actually get into it from the rooftops and with the jetpack, because this is kind of a... I don't know, I wanna say it's kinda high. 
here's my plan. I'm gonna that rooftop, this rooftop, that smokestack, that rooftop, and then we make it. Can we do it? I don't know. I didn't have had jetpacks for too long. Roof, roof, smokestack, smokestack. Oh, easy, easy. This is, this is child's play. Still a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a handful getting up here. That's how we want it. Because we wouldn't want any flipping jetpackless scrubs making their way here. Now, in all honesty, this build is not entirely finished, or at least not what I personally would call finish. Well, you see, if I do uh, this, for example, you'll quickly notice the logo of the kind of cracked skull with a cog instead of an eye. It's just straight up not on this side, and uh, there's no other explanation to this. I was just very, very tired when I was finishing this build. So, we will be definitely coming back, we will be redecorating, we will be adding some create mechanics to it, we will add some, we will absolutely increase the awesomeness of the, this build. But right now, I am very tired, and also it just so happens that Liara is online. So I'm gonna go grab every jetpack we crafted today, I'm gonna show her this build, we're gonna blow her socks off. Well, look who's finally decided to show up. Right. What do you mean, finally? Honestly, nothing. I don't... It, it's not been that long since you last played. I was just been kind of obsessed. Yeah, I've been asleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been asleep for, slash furniture shopping for the last 12 hours. Um, what's going on? Um, well, I mean, there's been developments, for one. Check this okay. thing out. Oh. Jetpack? I know, right? Jetpack. Yep, jetpack. Look who installed the sequence crafting thingy. Oh, you did? Nice, okay. No, I stood yeah, there right-clicking a single point, uh, like, deployer, like an idiot. Hey, <laughs> no, I did that for demonstration <laughs> purposes only. Let's try it on for size, for real. You gotta, you gotta do it. There's a certain logic to it, I don't want to explain it because it's kind of hilarious, but still. Let's see. She's Mary Poppins, y'all! You fall so fast. Oh, absolutely. There is supposed to be something resembling a hover mod, where you, like, stay on the same, but it's... It's like shift and space bar at the same time. Yeah, so that should explain the second point on the agenda. What's the second point on the agenda? Oh, it's not obvious enough for you. Pull out your oh. stupid spyglass. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I wondered why it was so dark over there, but that explains <laughs> it. Hold on. Uh, did you seriously not look just like up as you came through the air portal? Some of us use ADFOV, okay? Yeah, this is like literally made at the exact height as to not be accessible <laughs> by this jetpack. Like yeah, so I actually don't really know what to do with this thing. Like, I kind of just like went, jetpacks can fly. Awesome, I gotta build a flying, like, zeppelin and stuff. And also, like, true be told, this place isn't even finished. Like, uh, at the end of the day, I did want way more decorations in here. Or I might just keep it also as just kind of my mind pad. Like, away from you with your uh, shoddy brass jetpack and not my cool underside one. <laughs> it's yeah. your Mojo Dojo Casa boat. <laughs> I will throw you into the river. <laughs> you don't have to use that line, it just hit me. It's, it's very funny. Today on Create, it's time for the Holy Grail. And the site Alloy Factory. Think about it. Everything in this mod is made of it. And we're just gonna make it out of cobblestone. And all we have to do is wait. Now that's a good enough reason to install those display links I always wanted. I don't know quite how we're gonna do all of this stuff today, but I do know one single thing. Meet Day Shift, everyone. He's a drowned, because all of our factories are gonna be employing zombies. And he's a drone specifically because during the day <laughs> he doesn't actually attack. Hence the name. We'll be building all over this place today. We'll be kind of expanding this. So I actually need to move day shift uh, quite a few blocks out of the way. Only so that later day shift can move back in. Are you trying to get back in water, my man? This is gonna be tricky. Come on, dude. Come on, get in. Get in the mud. Yay! Now let's get you nice and situated here, in the back alley. I promise you'll be nice and cozy in the factory soon enough. And while we're here, look! I actually mirrored the other side of the ship, just like I promised! And I didn't forget to do that! 
truly, I'm not like other YouTubers. Other YouTubers don't spend five episodes fixing a single iron farm. Which now I think about it, this episode really is just about expanding the iron farm's capability because here's what we need if we want an Andesite alloy factory. First and foremost, iron nuggets. And that's what this building produces. But second is second, Andesite, which you can actually craft and create, and vanilla Minecraft. But you can also compact it out of gravel and flint which are the byproducts of this here factory as well. A byproduct we have entirely too much of if you ask me, but you know, that's why we're doing this. The third ingredient, however, to all of this is lava. And that's where we're kind of stumbling a little bit. Now you can recreate into like recognizing a giant pool of lava as just infinite and essentially letting you just chug from it for forever. But we're not doing that this episode just yet. Instead, I really do want a regular, normal vanilla lava farm. Because it's actually really easy to chug lava from it once you have that set up. This does, however, mean that we will need some dripstone and pointed dripstone, so... Into the caves they go! Luckily, the jetpack makes exploring, and especially exploring caves, kind of trivial. And I have been here, so I do seem to remember that there's been a giant cave with some dripstone somewhere nearby. But I could be just straight up misremembering and I'll just get lost and stuck and die. No, there it is! The cave, I mean, not the dripstone. Um, This is gonna be a little, a little longer of a trek than I anticipated. See, I thought that this entire mission is gonna be easy peasy lemon squeezy, but this... This is tough. Day 35 of the underground expedition. Provisions are low and the fuel supply is running out. What's worse, half the audience now has motion sickness from the constant bobbing of the jetpack. Day 60 of the Dripstone Pointed Expedition. I'm starting to think that this video might be late a little bit. Oh, this is the worst! This is the absolute worst, look at this. We actually found kind of an area with dripstone all over it, but look at that! None of it is pointy. Give me my stalactites. I need the Doritos! I need the triangles! The... 185 of the expedition. I have decided that dripstone doesn't exist. Coming home, I actually realized that we have a second way of making underside in the game, and that once again has something to do with the vanilla Minecraft, because you can craft andesite out of diorite. But little known fact, and little used thing, is that you can also craft diorite out of cobblestone. So here's my thinking. Let's say we got some cobblestone, we can crush it through the crusher to get ourselves some gravel. We then crush that gravel to get some sand. That sand then can be easily haunted using the fan network into becoming soul sand. And once the soul sand is sold, we can absolutely wash it to get this. Acquire quartz. We can combine that with cobblestone, we can combine that diorite with cobblestone again and get on the side. This is pretty flipping cool. All it needs really is a cobblestone generator and it's absolutely self-sustainable and we do not need any flipping gravel, any anything, no lava, no nothing. And it's great and it's a really, really convenient recipe that I absolutely recommend you try. For me, however, this entire method doesn't solve one crucial thing. And that is, it doesn't get rid of my giant vault full of flipping flint. Yeah, it's cool and all that we can just mix diorite with cobble to get andesite and like use it for andesite alloy, but it is honestly way more tempting to just get rid of all the gravel and flint we've been stockpiling by combining it into the a pretty useful block. So today I'm thinking we're just gonna skip building the lava farm for the time being. I still want one, obviously I still want one, that's how I'm gonna fuel my jetpack in the future. But we will for now just kinda grab a giant tank of lava somewhere and use that instead. And then eventually, maybe in the next episode, we'll actually make a dripstone-powered lava farm. I'll put it on my vision board. 
Okay, so here's the star of the hour basin. And here's the star of the hour mixer. There can be more than one star of the hour. An hour has a lot of time in it. And our goal today is essentially to deliver uh, one of the gravel and two of the flint and some of the lava into this central spot. And then whatever falls out will mix in with some iron nuggets. It's, it's only a little bit of a logistical challenge. Here you go, this is what you're supposed to make, buddy. So here's what we need to accomplish, except automate it. Two of the flint, one of the gravel, one of the lava. Soften cranks the crap out of this, and underside comes out. Look at that. Now we just need to somehow automate the entire process, and uh, yeah, I already have some conveyor belt shafts installed here and over there for our convenience. We will be giving this factory its own power supply, mind you. I don't want to dip into the steam thingy magic inside of that. But we definitely will not be using water wheels anymore. I'm sorry, I love them. It's enough. I think if I use a water wheel once more, Lee will flip and kill me. So that means we'll break in a boiler on our own for the first time ever. That can only go great. Okay, seriously, I somehow made a boiler. I'm actually quite proud of myself. So we just need to figure out where is it we want to put the entire crafting arrangement. And I honestly do think that just, let's just put it like in the air to do several more crafting steps afterwards. And then also like I might once again use regular hoppers instead of shoots. I'm so sorry, that's so silly of me. I know we're playing create, but it is really convenient. If I want to set up a chest and a vault, which only receives items if the chest under it overflows. This positioning, however, does create a little bit of an issue, and that is, uh, how am I gonna get anything into this basin? It's like at the ceiling. And I mean, look at this boy. Did you know that he can also transport items for you, not just players? So we want three of these weighted ejector friends, two for two pieces of flint, one for one piece of gravel. I do lie. We want as many of them as possible. They are a lot of fun. But for this factory, we will only need three. So we need to provide power something like this. And then we, I think, shift right click. Yep, target selected. This is a viable placing. And if I did everything correctly, then this stack of cobblestone should end up in that basin. Despite there very obviously being the mechanical press on top of it. Also, I'm pretty sure that it's currently crafting something. Oh no! Wait, what are you crafting? Sturdy stone. You can compact cobblestone and you can uncompact cobblestone. See, this is this is cool. This is really interesting to know. This also highlights that I forgot to put a recipe filter onto the base and I was a little bit silly of me. Here you go, never make anything but underside, you hear me? And here's the next logistical challenge. Yeah, we're moving flint. That's not really an issue. We'll just be using two injectors. Then here's the issue. We will need to split somehow the conveyor belt feed between the two. So we will need to be kind of dividing by two or something like that. And there is a thing for that. It's not quite for that exactly, but definitely can be used that way. This is an underside tunnel, and when an item passes through it, really, if an entire stack going, it will just separate one item and that's it. It's not really a perfect thing for what we're trying to do, but we're not getting stacks at a time is the thing. We are moving one flint by one thanks to the underside funnels instead of the brass ones. So it really should kind of take care of itself, honestly. Let's see if it actually functions. I have not played with these yet. I'll have you know. I'm a level with you, man. Uh, really, I'm getting the impression that this does not need to be this complicated. Also, this thing is not doing its job. Huh. All right, screw you. You think that didn't work, but uh, you know what I bet will? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. An input from a side. Please work. It is literally shocking to me how consistently double chests end up being logistical genius machines. I feel my brain expanding right now. This mod does things to me, I swear. So, okay, this contraption right now is absolutely hilarious to watch as... <laughs> More and more items are being flung through the air, uh, granting me, admittedly, the gift of a pretty open floor plan in this factory. Look at that! <laughs> God, but as funny as the item circus is, 
we do need to actually try and make this into something that we can work with. So I got a lava bucket here and luckily I can manually input it into the cauldron. Sorry, basin. Oh, look at that. It is working as we want. We just need to supply a large amount of lava somehow because I can't wait to get rid of all the gravel and flint and all the other stuff clogging up my iron factory. But with how lucky I've been with dripstone, I, I'd rather not risk it right now, so I'm gonna wait until Liara logs on, because she actually has a pretty cool way of getting a bunch of lava from out of somewhere. I don't know. I honestly have not looked into it, otherwise I would have done it myself. All right, I see we're going for the build the machinery first and the building afterwards this time. I mean, all. look, I, oh. I needed to try it out, is all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> so, here's an issue though. You can see that there's not really a steady supply of lava coming yeah, in. Yeah, I do notice the lack of lava. We could make like a lava farm, but I hear that for the time being. You know how to get like a big chunk of lava transferred from one place to another using the fluid tanks, because I tried. If you fill the fluid tank and you break it and to move it, it doesn't actually keep anything that's in it. Well, we're, yeah, I know exactly how to, and uh, I think that you can guess. Are you surprised? Are you insinuating we're gonna travel by air? No, no, I, we're, we're gonna move it as a contraption. Does a contraption remember all the stuff in it after being disembobulated? I Otherwise the drill wouldn't... Oh yeah, it does because the drills did! Yeah! Yep. Oh my god, you're, you're so right! Yeah, I've already used the exact technique oh, to wow, bring back uh... like 300 buckets for uh, Tia's place. Ah, so that's what that 50 minute long episode was about. So, yeah, you how many fluid tanks you got? Let's let's get something built up. <laughs> I mean, no joke, I've crafted 35 when I was building this boiler. Then I still kind of probably used 8 boilers too many on it. Okay, I think that's a big enough boy at this point. Uh, now we just need the hose pulley for it so that we don't make the mistake Tia and I made last time. Oh, uh, does a regular, f like, pump not work? Nope, it just takes the block directly in front of it, because lava is not an infinite thing. It's, it's... Oh... Yeah... Is this literally it? Do we want to, like, have anything else attached to it? I mean, we could make it decorative if we wanted to, but uh, by my calculations, this should fit back into the space that Tia and I have made before, so we just gotta, just gotta connect it together. Oh. Wait, so you already have like a station in the nether made for these things? Yes, we just need the the actual tank and a hose pulley and that, that's All it. All right, well, let's glue it together. Let's see if it actually works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so stupid. One pocket tank. Whoops. This is so stupid. I'm never going to get used to it. Is. Every single time it's just like, yoink, let's go. It is the absolute <laughs> best. Oh, oh God, this is... <laughs> you were really doing it, yeah, huh? Yeah, I told you. We have it all set up, although I'm going to, uh, I'm going to fix a problem from last time if I've got anything that's, you know, not burnable on me. Um, actually, I guess I can't because by nature, the hose pulley has to be over lava when I pop it, huh? Okay, uh, how do I well... plug this in? Uh, is it going to blow up if I do this? Oh my god, it, it basically looks... Like it's supposed to be here. Yep. Were you doing it with the exact this size of a tank? Is my my question. Yes, we were using this exact same dimensions of tank. So. Astonishing. Okay, so we just uncontraption it. It becomes yep. it becomes this. And uh, do I just put the hose pulley onto the pump? Um, we do. Although that should be a regular pipe, not a not a pump. No, it's supposed to be a pump. Like, it needs to suck out of the hose pulley. The hose pulley can't suck oh, yeah. it itself. It's just supposed to be the other way around. That was the problem. Ah. And we turn this sucker on. All right. So, sail we power. actually... Still yet to make my own mean windmill in our island, but definitely want, like, a couple of these exact things for the airship. Like, as propellers and stuff. Oh, yeah. And they don't generate that much power, honestly. Water wheels do way more. Well, I don't care. These look cooler. Fair enough. I was going to say, if you want to do the honors of cranking it, feel free. Oh, I need to... Oh, that's how it yep, is. So lower that on down. Do I need... And, and there you go. Yeah, there we go. That's an achievement. 
Pump from a body of lava large enough to be considered infinite. It's actually pretty speedy. 20 minutes to fill the whole thing up, so... Oh, definitely want to AFK, not just stand here, but... Yeah, yeah, okay. You can start figuring out how you're changing the andesite and andesite alloy in the meantime. So while Lee's down there kind of chugging the nether, I really am gonna go solve the rest of the factory. We figured out how to make andesite, we just need to mix it with the iron nuggets now. Oh, and then build a really nice looking building around it, that would be really fun. Okay, what are we doing here? We're taking off the jetpack, it's uh, convenient, but it's gonna be a nightmare to watch. Well, for one, we'll need still some hoppers, I think, because we will need the same interface that outputs into a chest, and then, if the chest is filled, it outputs into anything else. So, let's go get that. Never gonna get tired of having an iron farm. It's the best thing ever. I feel myself getting dumber every time I say this, but can a hopper input into a basin? It do! Okay, this is perfect because uh, putting from putting into it from a side is gonna be so much easier, you know, with the <clears throat> with the mixer being right on top of it and obstructing any sort of uh, interaction. And here we're gonna do something like this. Recipe filter, underside alloy. Wouldn't want you making polished underside or something like that. Chest here, and now all that we need to do is somehow uh, pull power to this kinetic uh, mixer and also somehow drag, well, the nuggets from out of this item vault all the way here. Huh. God, this contraption is a lot, but one thing it certainly isn't is uh, pretty. <laughs> and like, I got this entire line ready and I know how to power it, but how do I transfer stuff from all the way down here to all the way down up here? Actually, you know what? Never mind. I uh, I think I figured it out. <gasps> oh my god, this is gonna be so horrible. <laughs> okay, test drive. Definitely works. <laughs> this is quite a bit of roaring machinery begging to be put out of misery. <laughs> Between all the flingers, all the everything else and yada yada, but that honestly probably just me being mean to it. I bet, I bet this can already work. So, Lee's out there, I've came for our lavas, so I say let's uh, substitute her quickly. I got a, a lava bucket here uh, ready and waiting, let's plug it to the basin. This should produce some on the side, there we go. This goes into the, into the on the side thingy, into the basin down here, and naturally immediately gets mixed with a birch plank that I dropped in there by accident. Of course. Are you mixing, bro brother? Are you are you are you gonna do the thing? Oh, we're not mixing fast enough. Hold on, let me go fetch some big cogs. Rotational speed controller? Who's that? Never heard of him. Okay, and now we mix in, and we gain advancements, and we're making underside alloy. Get it? Heck yeah! This is incredible. Love it. Absolutely amazing. This recipe, uh, just a little personal anecdote, has been a nightmare, a personal nightmare of mine for the longest damn time. Every single time I need like another side casing or something, it's like, oh, go get the other side, oh, yada yada. Having a stockpile of it is gonna be such a relief. So good for me. And you know, the side itself is also a really nice block, so uh, I'm just gonna plop a barrel down here and uh, get a little, you know, trickle down going on. Uh, once this barrel is gonna be filled with underside, that's where we're gonna be crafting underside alloy. It's honestly just a matter of IFKing. But first, I say this factory deserves a little bit of a facelift. I'm gonna build a building over it and hide the absolute eroticism of a machine that's going on in here, okay? This is not for children's eyes, like, come on, it's all naked. Well, the tank's full. 
Oh, there you are! Wonderful, wonderful! The, no, the thing's done. Yes. yes. Oh, good. Okay, both of our things are done. All right. The, the, the thing's cool. finished. You, uh... The ass finished as it's going to be. Wow, this is... Uh, I guess I'm glad I have the jetpack still on so I can really take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive, in my opinion, if I do say so myself. This is meant to be more of a kind of a street on this side, like more of a main streetish. So I made this look a little bit more like a shop than it is a factory. Kind of like a manufacturer, like a refinery of sorts. Yeah, but it's still pretty industrial in my opinion. I love the like ruby red of the crimson, crimsite, or whatever it is that I'm, crimsite, okay. I'm using here on the walls. Yeah, anyway, so if you come in, yeah. this is day shift Aww. that round. He's uh, ra kind of running the shop, making sure that everything functions well. Nice. On the inside, you can also kind of do all the maintenance if you want. It's. Uh, it's still pretty, it's open, it's open plan, it's open season, because uh, I really, really didn't want to abstract the machinery any more than it needs to be, because something here is gonna break, and we're gonna have to fix it. Fair enough. I tested it all out, it all works, or at least supposed oh, to. Well, it nice. will work when we actually deploy the lava. Which I have right here. Uh, here? Okay, dokie. And we make it into not a contraption. Allowing That's me... what it was already. <laughs> yeah, allowing me to do this. No, wait. This. <laughs> and watch this. We make it back into a contraption. All right. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> you you thought it was a regular pipe, didn't you? I just don't know if it's actually. Hang on, let me. Is this actually taking anything? Okay, good. It is. We've. No, it's working. It's working. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have we have no way to see the current contents of this now though like we can't see how well, many we can tell how many buckets we can, okay are in this. okay okay for a moment for a moment there. these yeah. are portable fluid interfaces they are basically like those docking stations you have on the farm but for fluid yeah and when i, I realized how easy they are to make i was like okay i'm not gonna flipping tolerate having like contraption back and forth i'm just gonna let her park the entire uh, the entire contraption, the entire tank here, and I'm not gonna transform it back and forth because I can avoid it. I mean, I guess I just, number one, get really paranoid about leaving things to traptions ever mm. since what happened to the drill. Oh, absolutely, but we're not gonna be off game here until it, like, runs out, you know. But more importantly, like I said, I don't know how to tell it's how my much logic. it's used. Like, <laughs> hey, if it's working, then it's u being used. Whatever. Let's check it out. Are we actually getting? Yeah, we are. Look at that. Is it? No. I am. No, no, no. It is. Con do do you not oh. hear the dunk? I I don't. I don't hear that at all. I just see that the gravel's not moving, so I thought it wasn't working. I'm honestly shocked that this worked first try because I did not have a chance to test out the fluid pipe system. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I'm getting a giggle out of the, watching the andesite pop out of the front every single time <laughs> that... Uh, it's so poopy! I hate it! Just a little... I love it! It stomps down and then it pops out. It's so good. Yeah, at approximately the same rate. It's very, very beautiful. But also, yeah. I just... Ah. And for the time being, I do think that we're going to be using this kind of situation where we put a contraption down on the nether, we fill it in, we go back here, we park the car here, kind of unload it every morning, and eventually we'll get a lava farm, I hope. Yeah, exactly. We already have all the piping installed, so all we'll have to do is uh, run some lava underneath over here. Got no clue where that's going yet, though. I think it's replacing the farm. So this is all awesome, love it, but I wanna go the extra mile. Not the extra mile where we get a lava farm, mind you, that's uh, for one of the next episodes. For now though, I'm really loving that I have potentially infinite underside supply, but it is kind of inconvenient because we're there at the workshop and I'm like, oh no, I run out of underside alloy. I wonder if there's any in the shop. So it's fine that I have to walk and grab it, but I don't want to be wondering, which is why I got these things. The display link, the content absorber, and the display boards. In fact, I got like, I don't know, what this is, 12 display boards just up there already waiting to happen. I want to display my uh, supply of basically everything, like all I, all I have here, all, we, all we're making, I want to be tracking because that will be incredible aid at potentially fixing this farm if it breaks. 
So I wanna try. Nope, that's not not what I wanted to try. I wanna try and do something here, right? So this is a content observer. I wonder how it works. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to like point it at something, and then what I need to do is I need to grab a display link and bind it to some sort of a thing that can output output information. Hilariously, I'm pretty sure even Nixie tubes will do. So. Uh, shift right click in this and then I'm putting this on top of this thing and uh, Nothing happened 100% successful operation. Okay, let's see does this thing maybe have like a setting of sort. Oh, okay So this is the input. This is the output We are sending to the Nixie tubes. We are getting from the From the content observer. Ah, I need to scroll Okay, let's get Amount of matching items. Is it gonna work? <gasps> it is! 39? My man, that's not... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm pretty sure... 4,000! There we go. 401! That's better. That's better. I... I oh, you almost had me in the first uh, part there. But uh, if we take out all of these and only leave 64... Yep, yeah, there we go. 64. So, this is accurate. And we can even display onto Nixie tubes, but we don't want to display onto the Nixie tubes. We want to display onto the giant board of the display on that side of the farm, so that we can basically see it directly out of our uh, workshop. So I'm gonna just uh, stick a content observer onto the underside chest, underside alloy chest as well, and I'm gonna strap one to the iron nugget vault and obviously to the flint vault. And finally, I'm gonna hook one up to the gravel, cause, like, it's not that I really care how much gravel we're making, but it's gonna be helpful watching, like, the number change. It's fun when the number go up, okay? Now I just need to thread click this baby with all of my content observers, with all of my display links, and hope that they remember exactly what I wanted them to do. Yeah, you're line number two. Look at that! 3000 iron nuggets! It's not nearly enough <laughs> for anything, mind you, because I I'm in is nine of those. So um, let's keep let's get it a little bit more precise. Three thousand three hundred and two iron nuggets. I'm gonna name the top line vault state. I like the idea of actually labeling my things. There's also another cool thing we can do with stockpile switches, and uh, these are a little bit different. These actually output redstone signal dependent on if the amount of material inside of the vault is within particular parameters. It's really handy and it's really, really good, but I don't really care for that ability of theirs right now. Right now, I just want to output the thing out of them. Um, because they output something completely different to the just number of material. They output a percentage of how occupied any particular container is. So we can show like a progress bar on, uh, I wanna say line three. And if we did everything correctly, there we go, that's the progress bar. Progress bar of what? Yeah, I, I bet you would like to know that, huh? According to this, the gravel vault is literally full. And you know what? I won't, I won't have it any other way. And here's the current final configuration. We got uh, the vault state, iron nuggets, underside, and underside are things that we actually care about, so we're displaying actual precise amounts. And then gravel and flint, we're just displaying the percentages of the filament of the vault. It's not really, doesn't matter, like, it, the only thing that matters for gravel is if the vault is full or not. And the only thing that matters for the flint is nothing. I hate it and it sucks. Which is why I'm gonna color underside stuff with light gray and gravel and flint with gray so that when you look at it you immediately get all the information kind of like burnt into your brain because the iron nuggets are brighter so you like you get immediately an impression that it's more important let's test it out da -da 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 -da. how's my factory doing look at that we have seven underside alloy it's gonna be a while gang it's gonna be a while this is pretty cool though I wish I made this sooner, would have saved me quite a few trips back and forth. To then create, it's time to build a lava factory. There's a few ways of getting infinite lava in Create and also in Minecraft. And are we gonna needlessly go for the most complicated one, I hear you ask? The answer is yes. 
That's right everyone, we're doing blaze cakes today. If you know what that means, you're probably already cursing at the screen. You can see I'm wearing my copper jetpack that sucks today because I literally ran out of lava that I could use for fuel. And with my underside factory also running on lava, we are actively stuck with no lava, or at least with no lava farm. I did prep these two, but I don't necessarily need them at the same moment. Which, yeah, the onside factory, thanks to the day shift and my uh, efforts, has now successfully produced enough alloy to feed us for probably the rest of whatever this playthrough is. How we doing on those iron nuggets? Oh yeah, I love to see this. So today I need to make a lava farm if I want to keep getting on the side, even if I want to keep getting flight. And we already had a plan for one. Obviously you can't generate lava in vanilla Minecraft by putting a lava block over a dripstone block and putting a pointed dripstone under that. The problem with this plan is that I don't have 15 years for the pointed dripstone to grow, because if you want to produce a feasible amount of lava that way, you need this farm to be flipping giant. Luckily, in Create, there is a different way to craft lava. Turns out you can smelt just about every stone type into lava if you just mix it over a superheated blaze. And superheated blaze burners are quite an adventure, let me tell you that, because it's not enough to just have the blaze burner. This Buevi only produces about enough, like, as a, and, and about as much heat as a campfire. You can feed it different materials to get it actually heated, but to superheat it, you need to specifically feed it what's called a blaze cake, which itself requires lava as a part of its recipe. So you can see how this is very, very confusing to me, because to make lava, you need to already have lava. And according to this recipe, it only produces like 50 millibuckets, while this baby eats up 250. One lava bucket will only produce four blaze cakes. The question is, how much lava then can a blaze cake produce? So let's try it out, I guess. It's not like we have a shortage of cauldrons or whatever they're called in the create mode. So you say, what was in a basin? Okay, we, we'll need a basin for this. But first let's put together an actual blaze cake, because... This is another rabbit hole. So the blaze cake base is actually a stamped together mix of cinder flour, sugar and egg. Which naturally we do have plenty of sugar. We can have a bunch of eggs because chickens are one of the only two animals that were actually actively farming around here. Thanks for the extra guys. And finally cinder flour is literally just netherrack crushed amongst the crushers. Which is gonna take a moment. Here you go, here you go, and here you go, and uh, get stamping. Oh, also, while this is going on, you may have noticed I added these cute signs all over the place in a kind of a attempt to be OSHA compliant. This one means that there's blazes ahoy, so, you know, be careful, don't, don't carry too many inflammatory materials. This is the general kind of like, be careful, this could kill you message, which naturally, yeah, a cog will not, but... Uh, we have exposed machinery here, I just really thought that it's a kind of funny idea. I got a couple more like this, like here there's like a faucet kind of a situation to signify that you can put lava into this pipe. And I even made this design over here to kind of be like, wow, be careful, don't fall, because we don't have any sort of a railing in this mod pack, unfortunately. These were made using the supplementary blackboards, and uh, these are actually pretty cool. You can basically customize the entire texture of it by simply drawing stuff. So yes, all of the signs that you just saw were drawn by me by hand. Because how else are you gonna do it? Luckily, you can at least, you know, copy them. And I'm saying this specifically for the people who don't know it, because if you would have to make a bunch of these and you don't know that you can copy, it would be flipping nightmare, let me tell you that. And now that you know that these have to be made by, like, pixel by pixel, please be very impressed that I made this here sign. <laughs> really, if I was gonna do my, like, due diligence, it would be really hard for me to put a 2x2 two two sign like this in every single spot where we have exposed machinery. <laughs> so... Oh, and I forgot that I made an actual, you know, careful, this is inflammatory kind of a sign. I'm gonna put a couple of these ones out of my comment section, crying out loud. Are my blaze cakes done? One is. What? Oh, and the rest got made into Shura Cube. Oh, my mistake, my mistake, my mistake. Okay, here. Recipe filter make 
specifically that material. Don't feed me flipping sugar cubes. Come on, dude. It's kind of a nice texture on it, though, and not gonna lie. Also, gravity block. Now to actually get one of them blaze cakes lavaficated. Always disgusting when you spout like that. I just I, I hate that animation. And let's see how much lava can a blaze produce while being overheated. Okay, we do want the mixer to mix as fast as possible though, because as far as I understand, basically this blaze being superheated is gonna be a kind of a time limit here. So we want to produce as much lava as possible to see what is the maximum desired outcome. Which is just a long way of me saying that yes, I am going to build another boiler. Also, I'll be speeding up the uh, mixer with a rotational speed controller because flipping look at this. I'm so tired of this kind of crap. Oh wow, Zloy, did you seriously craft up like what? Seven precision mechanisms just so you can craft some rotation speed controllers later? Yes, I absolutely did. It's a pain in the butt. I'm tired of using cogs left and right. How do I even position you, boy? Oh, oh, you need to be in that direction. And so the nightmare continues. Okay, there you go. That part is functional. But the trick now is that I actually need another cog up here for it to flip and go. There we are, 256. <laughs> Heck yeah. And I'm just gonna just belt it because you know what, whatever at this point. Yeah, so I sure hope that this is the top speed at which it, it can go because I don't think it would be safe to try and create another like gear shift after the rotational speed controller already was been set to maximum. If I did everything correctly, we just need to give this a bunch of cobblestone and we need to feed this boy something delicious. Here we go, get overheated and... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, oh crap. Where would the lava go though? Oh, I miscalculated. Empty canister. Can I... I cannot. Okay, cool. Uh, so that was a waste of a blaze cake. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Just let me add another pipe with another pump. I hate liquid mechanics so much. Ah! It's leaking! It's leaking now! <laughs> crap! <laughs> Here we go. And the blaze run out of cake power. Glorious. Uh, do I have more of the <laughs> of the cake bases done, if not more of the cakes? Oh, they're fine. Look at that. 31. Ah, oh, that's great. Almost half a stack. Yeah, eat. And you know what? Let's see it happen. I'm even gonna add a hopper. You know, this low XP special, all, so that all the cobblestone does need to be thrown by hand. Okay, moment of truth. I'm feeling optimistic. I'm, feel, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about the entire situation. We have good speed on the mechanical mixer. We got some good blazes going on. I don't know, let's see how many lava buckets we can get. Which, now to think about it, if we got one lava bucket out of that entire situation, that is still... Really, really good, actually, given that we've spent a quarter of a lava bucket on the blaze cake. And everything else for the blaze cake is technically farmable, so... This experiment is already kind of proving itself worth the effort. Oh, we are already surpassing the amount of lava lava that we're using to make this. It is already ticking, like, 750, 800. This is pretty flipping good. So that... That's gonna add up to one full lava bucket. And is the... Yep, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is chugging out. Very eventually, for some reason. Okay, I don't know what I did, but all of a sudden this entire system started working. So, I'm just gonna yoink my hopper real quick, wait for this to run out, and we're gonna do a final clean test with the next blaze cake, as soon as this one runs out. This might be a little bit too optimistic uh, size of a container, though. <laughs> Have to admit there. There we go, filled on the cobblestone. Let's get this super heated. I am not getting any data whatsoever about what exactly is happening. I think I broke the hopper somehow. I am now convinced that this project is cursed. So we're chugging and we're chugging and we already remade an entire lava bucket. If this was where it stopped, we would have been already self-sufficient. 
we can't keep making blaze cakes with this. We just need all the other ingredients for the blaze cake base. So that would be the Cinder Flower, which is just netherrack. We could in theory get it from the nether. Or, keep in mind, we can actually craft netherrack <laughs> in create for some reason. The recipe requires potion of healing, which itself in theory is perfectly craftable. But that might be a little bit above my pay grade right now, not gonna lie, because, I mean, potion making just sounds a little bit too difficult right now. Well, the blaze cake ran out, the results are in, and out of 250 milli buckets, so one quarter of a bucket of lava, we now got 8.5 buckets, just like that. And I'm pretty sure that that wasn't even a perfect, like, experiment kind of a condition situation. We could, in theory, go get it even harder. So we can sufficiently make cobblestone into lava kind of on demand, as long as we're willing to part with some netherrack. And honestly, at a much faster rate than the dripstone farm. Which, don't get me wrong, I still want the dripstone farm. It's just, you know, it's a kind of a Liara project. And uh, this one, I guess is gonna be slow, the slow one. <laughs> and now we're pumping all the lava into this fluid container and then have a single lava block over here that we're also pumping out into until we roll up with a large fuel tank for the jetpack and start yoinking the lava from him. This way we now have a refueling station, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Finally, I can put back on my underside jetpack and then put it right back into the backpack because it definitely does not have the durability to actually, you know, be usable right now. We need to get Mendin. We need to get Mendin stat. In the meantime, I want you to make me more lava. By now you might have noticed that I have this area of the map kind of zoned out and that is because I actually wanted to have a building here for basically as long as we have planned out this part of the island. I even have an approximate blueprint. Okay, it's more of a sketch. And I've been using it as a backdrop for these exact videos you've been watching since this series began. But before we can build that, and believe me, I really want to build that, I need a little bit more of the farming types put into this area so that the lava farm generating is a little bit more self-sufficient. Uh, so we just need the base for the cake itself and the ingredients are pretty simple. So, first and foremost, we're gonna need an egg farm, we're gonna need a cobblestone generator, we are gonna need some sugar cane for the sugar, and finally, for the base of the blaze cake, we will need naturally netherrack, and then we just mix it all up into a blaze cake base, put some lava on it, and feed it back into the thing, where naturally the cobblestone generator is gonna provide the cobblestone. <sighs> that all sounds... So easy, and admittedly, a shuriken farm is not really that hard here in Create. As is an egg farm, egg farm is basically just a bunch of chickens on top of a hopper. And yet, it's gonna be such a nightmare to make, I promise you. You know, almost newly shocked how flipping forever this takes. Good thing it at least makes two at a time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's go. You fall damage less foul. Okay, can I... Can I land you? It's like the opposite of the claw machine. Come on, come on, come on. Hey! Now I need to do, like, 15 of these. Wait, what? How are you? Are you on my... Okay, I appear to have discovered something... Uh... Delight... Thanks? Still get into the farm though. Um, yep, stay there. Oh, this is actually really fun. Check this out. It's not just that I can pick up a chicken and put it on my head, apparently. Because we do have carry on mod, in theory, shift right clicking should do it, even though it for some reason does not. Here, I also get a couple effects going on. And look at that, my jetpack is off, but like, I'm not taking any fall damage. <laughs> That's because. With a chicken on my head, I get a slowness and also slow falling effect. So I can just go as high as I want and then just drop. And very eventually I will drop. 
But with a chicken on the head, I won't take any fall damage. Which, once again, would have been nice to know back when I was building that stupid airship. I've been wrangling chickens and breeding them and multiplying them for like half an hour now. Can can we have can, can we have a break for the airship, by the way? Just real quick, I want to show you a couple things. So I have to admit, once I was building this airship myself, so I had to do it like in the middle of the night, yada yada, it was a crime of passion. But as many crime of passions, it came out a little bit sloppy, and uh, as a result, for example, that thing on the back wasn't a thing yet. I only added it like between the videos and never even mentioned, I don't know, did you notice? Did you? Are you paying attention? You better, because I also added those really cool windmills that generate power, that you, gang, told me to add, because I completely forgot that they were even a thing. I wanted some propellers on this airship, obviously, it's kind of the entire point. I will even be able to get some energy for it. Isn't that flipping amazing? Also, I added a couple of these extra turbines on either side of the ship. Trust me, it's all mirrored. Trust me, it looks amazing. I am in love with this build. Sign off in the comments. What can we put up there? Because whatever we put it there is gonna be epic, kind of just by definition. I'm also naturally making a shuriken farm up here and uh, I just kind of figured out that apparently a mechanical plow is probably better than a harvester in our situation. I'm not actually sure of it, but I hope it's gonna work, because from what I understand, a mechanical plow will plow but uh, through basically any semi-transparent blocks such as this, given that uh, shuriken is at least semi-transparent and you can pass through it easily as through any other block shown on the diagram. I'm pretty sure that I got the recipe covered here. Let's see, is this going to work? Yeah, not if I make it rotate the, the opposite way from where it's supposed to. Awesome, so we do get stuff from this. I forgot to install any sort of an inventory on it. Yeah, yeah, here's your chest. Here's your double chest even. And I'm even going to splurge on a portable storage interface. Now get rotated, idiot! Oh my god, this is a... This is a mess, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, so, cool beans, I won't have to interact with this mess. By the most part. So yeah, only thing I need to really put in by hand is a nether rack, which is not really a problem. Absolutely, nether rack is plentiful. I can go and brrrt a bunch of nether rack at any point for myself. The problem is that the chest that I need to input it is all the way up here. So, we may wanna kinda do a little bit of a logistics up here, in a little bit, but until then, uh, yeah, I think we're ready for the first try. Please be enough talk. Please have enough stress units. Ah, it's immediately overstressed. And just in time for me to emerge from the slowing down of the apparatus, we run out of eggs. Go egg, become cake. Wonderful, there we go, blaze cake base. Honestly, this is way more of it than I am currently ready to actually process. On the other hand, yeah, let's just put in a copstone generator and we'll be able to actually fill all of this in. Lava is infinite. Now, at the end of the day, this is quite a significant mess. I can't wait to put a building over it. Much as I honestly kind of enjoy seeing it all work. Like, okay, this tower of cogs, just for the sake of speed, is not really my favorite. But I am kind of proud that, like, it does have its own shut-off line and all that kind of stuff. All these conveyor belts are gonna be really fun to actually watch in action as soon as this entire thing is actually, you know, capable of action. Which is gonna be in just a tiny little bit. There is actually still one more thing missing, and that is... This thing right here. This, this is a mechanical arm. And what it does is pretty amazing. Apparently, it's basically an evolved version of a deployer. And I'm not sure that the deployer even can do what we're about to force this thing into doing. Because that's what we'll be using to actually feed the blazes right here. So I'm pretty sure that we are meant to right shift right click at here. Shift right click at this as a target. Plop this baby down here. And look at that. Okay, no, it's 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 taking a little a little time. It's taking a little extra time, but it is doing it. 
it will just go on making this and forcing it to make lava until, well, either uh, it run out, run, runs out of blaze cakes or I install some sort, sort of a safety precaution for when the lava tank fl overflows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually don't think if this basin can keep crafting without an output to craft into. But I'm not gonna take the chance. I have plenty of clutches. I can clutch with the best of them. I'll shut it off right right now. This line will disable the sugarcane farm if the sugar starts overflowing. This line will detect if the eggs are overflowing and starts burning them down here directly using regular dropper. This line shuts off the entirety of cobblestone generator if this chest is full, which it is. Well, there it is, it's shut down. And finally, this stockpile switch activates a shutdown sequence for the entire lava farm if this fluid container, if the fluid container is full for 100%, till 78% is reached, at which point it will switch back on and start making more. So, as soon as we start using this, that's when it will start producing once again. Otherwise, it will just sit at 100%, perfectly fine, being very, very beautiful, but probably inside a building, which, speaking of, I owe you a building, don't I? Well, truth be told, this is going to be quite a bit of a challenge here, because this build, though uh, it will definitely be pretty, and I really, really am excited to build it, I have some plans for it. I love the idea of uh, this road here being a passage under one of the overhangs, and this here being a passage under another one. After all, this area behind it is kind of where we want to put the main town square, so it would make sense to have extra passages back and forth, and essentially every third of this farm is getting its own little housey, which will then be connected via corridors. And the best part about this build is that it is going to be kind of symmetrical. So, as you notified me in the comments, there is actually a tool specifically for that. Look, we don't quite have building ones in this mod, but we do have a wand of symmetry. And I did craft those seven precision mechanisms, so let's go make one, just, you know, see what it feels like. Oh wow, look, the center pearl has been here for like, what, three episodes now? That, I've been keeping it for this occasion specifically. Every single time with this thing, I swear, it's like, I never know when it is and isn't going to work. Hey, let's see what you are about. So let's see, if I place, I guess, a mirror here, it doesn't mirror this way, but it does this way. And it does consume two blocks at a time, which does look really, really... Oh, <gasps> it even breaks back! Oh my god, it breaks both! Okay, that makes sense, that makes so much sense! Alright, this build time-lapse is gonna be so flipping confusing. Oh, and it does spread basically the entire way. I could literally build the entire building by only building half of it. Wow, I am... Uh, why haven't I used this solder? That it! <laughs> this would have helped so much with the ship. I hate mirroring anything in Minecraft. Let's go, let's do a time-lapse. Let's see what it looks like. And this would be the build in all of its glory. I am very happy with how this came out. I'm not going to lie. There are a few special details that I uh, broke out 
specifically for this build alone. Uh, one of those are these smoke stacks that are meant to be uh, utilized for like trains and stuff. But I figured I might as well. Uh, this is a factory and it does produce a lot of heat. We got one big smoke stack up there. We got a couple of tinier ones and some pipes sticking out. And on the other hand, we got these fans sucking out the fresh air from the sea to maybe cool some of the machinery and prevent it from absolutely melting. Because remember, we're making lava in here. I am super proud and super happy of this build and most and foremost, I am super proud and super happy of the fact that it works! We don't still have the full 936, but that's because we haven't spent that much yet for uh, the engine to kick back in and we had a reason enough to stop our producing uh, machinery. And uh, yeah, that's when I found out that the way I had it set up it didn't actually work. So I had to move the clutch, I had to move the redstone link, have to adjust it here and there, but now everything works perfectly fine. And we have another night shift employee over here uh, with a... I don't know why I felt like I need to give him the magnifying glass, but he does have one now. I'm assuming that's because he's like inspecting the mechanical arm, making sure everything works. Overall, this build came out exactly the way I wanted it to, and I am super happy with it! The best part, bar none, ended up being the exact tunnels, like these little support beams made with uh, diagonally facing uh, shoots are actually really really cool looking, especially with the backdrop I've given them, and these little tunnels for people to go through to enter the central square, line up perfectly. And I already tested, I already connected it under the ground, we have central heating! The underside factory will just keep making its own underside, by its own. Where is this lava coming from? You don't flip no, I don't flip in no, it goes from under the ground, and under the ground is where there's a secret pipe going from the lava factory all the way across the street. And I cannot believe how easy it was to build using the symmetry wand. I expected the symmetry wand to be like the biggest headache, just the most disoriented thing. And honestly, no it wasn't. I wish I made this sooner, before I built, you know, a bunch of other perfectly symmetrical builds. 